All right, everyone. I do have a couple donations here to read before we start the Kingdom Hearts 2 randomizer. I have $50 from Buzz saying, what are you buying? A world without cancer and maybe some Resident Evil? I hope so. I, I definitely want to see that Resident Evil Village happen tonight. I also have a $500 donation from Anonymous saying everything towards RE8 Run. Lady Demetris demands to be on stream. All right, and I think we are ready to get started with that Kingdom Hearts 2 randomizer. So let's sit down, relax. It's gonna be a great run. Okay, hello everyone and welcome to the Kingdom Hearts 2 randomizer 2v2 co-op race here at AGDQ 2022. I am Alios, and I'm here with my co-commentator. Uh, I'm Zach the Robot. Alios, this is going to be really exciting. I'm really, I'm just jonesing to get this going. Yeah, seriously, I've been, I've been so excited to see this race here. I'm amazed that we got a randomizer in. This is going to be wonderful. All right, let, let's probably get this going and count the racers down. Uh, let's introduce them first. Uh, we have Violin and Rose Curel on one team. And we have Spike Vegeta and Jay Hobbs on the other team. So we got we got two teams that are very strong in this randomizer. They're gonna do great. We should, let's get us, let's get them going. Yeah, you wanna we wanna count down for five? Yeah, sure. Well I'll count down. Alright. In five, four, three, two, one, go. Alright, everybody's okay. going. Yeah, so for those of you who do not know how the randomizer works, every single item in the game and all of the chests are going to be randomized. Uh, level up abilities are going to be randomized. Uh, boss bonuses and pop-ups, those are going to be randomized as well. So essentially what's going to be happening here is they will have to get all of the important checks for... Uh, what the randomizer community considers to be important checks. Those are the magic, the forms, the torn pages for 100 acre wood, the summons, uh, all of the three proofs, and second chance and once more, since they're so integral to being able to survive in, you know, general Kingdom Hearts combat. Right, so that, that comes to a total of 37 checks. That's the counter that you see on screen. And so their goal is to collect all 37 of those things. And then once they've collected all those items, wherever they are, we have to go through the final bosses of the game and beat Final Zemus. So that is the goal. Exactly. Um, so we're, we're already getting into fights. So let's talk about those. Uh, this first fight in Pride Lands that Spike, Violin, and Rose are all doing. Uh, there is a consistent strat to get through this where you get the reaction command at the beginning, you make sure you grab that first living bones, and you just ride that living bones until it hits the other one. And then hopefully, if everything goes well, everybody will live and you can continue and collect every single chest in the game. Yeah, in all honesty, we got kind of lucky with uh, how well all three runners actually got through that first fight. A lot of the times, Donald and Goofy just don't do their job, and they won't hit the second living bones, and it'll spit at you, and on critical difficulty, which is what these runners are on, you just, it, it, you get one shot. Exactly, yeah, so that's very good to see that everybody got through that fight just fine. Uh, while everybody else is in Pride Lands, Hobbs is in Space Paranoids to uh, get some more information for his team. Yeah, the way that this co-op actually works is not that all the players are within the same like game instance. It's more about them being able to share information between one another and cut down on the time they're having to spend. Since all of the players have to get every check if they can split up and find out where everything is first, they can provide that information so that they don't have to pick up every single chest as they're running through the world. Correct. So let, let's talk about some of the items that they've already found really quick. Uh, so they found Wisdom Form in like the starting chest, which is very good to find early. Um, I think they found Slide Dash, which is a good combat ability in Space Paranoids. Uh, they're looking for things like 
movement that will make them go through worlds faster, uh, combat abilities to make fights faster, uh, and then those important checks, like we said. Yeah, and finding something like Slide Dash and Wisdom Form this early is actually really helpful because Wisdom Form has Quick Run built into it. So if they don't have any movement right now, they could go into Wisdom Form and use Quick Run to get around the worlds faster because otherwise you're just, you know, jogging through, through open fields, essentially. Correct, yeah. Um, now... Most importantly here, with the randomizer, they're going to be able to get forms and abilities that you normally wouldn't have at this point in, in the base game. All of the worlds are available through the Garden of Assemblage. Um, as you can see like on Jay Hobbs' screen, um, all the Garden of Assemblage doors have new icons, and the icons are representative of the world it's going to take you to. Uh, the data bosses themselves have been moved around uh, at the ends of some of the worlds so that you can fight them. Otherwise, you know, the doors have been being used at this point. So as they go into each world, they'll do the first part of the world through the story, fight the first boss, and then they can re-enter and do part two. So they're going to have to go through them fairly linearly individually, but they can choose which world they want to do and in what order. Correct. Yeah, so that... It's a very open randomizer in contrast to other randomizers like Zelda randomizers that are more logic-based. So we're going to see a lot more uh, fuzzy boundaries of when the runners are going to go through their fights. It's just going to be when they're comfortable doing a fight, they're going to do it. Yeah, there really aren't any barriers to entry. There's no like required items beyond, uh, I think, you need one of each magic for the mini game in Agrabah 2. Otherwise, they could technically do the worlds in any order they wanted, you know, barring having the abilities they need to not die in the forced fights. Right. Um, so let, let, let's talk quickly about how they know when they're done with a world. So like we said that they're talking, they're collecting all 37 important checks, right? Well, so they're gonna know when they found every important check in a world, and they're just gonna collect items until their trackers say that they are done with the world. Uh, Halloween Town, at the beginning of the seed, was already said it's done, there's no important items there. But Hobbs has decided to go there anyway because there's good abilities there, potentially. Yeah, Hobbs actually found Flash Step right now, which, yeah. which is huge. And a glide there too. So that oh, was wow. very good movement. So if anything, Hobbs having that information now means that Spike has that information, and I would be very surprised if Spike didn't also go there just to get that glide and the flash step to make the rest of their run that much faster. Right. Um, that could also be a huge time save over Rose and Violin, um, just given that normally doing a world that's already considered like there's no important checks, it wouldn't always have the highest chance of giving you you know, the tools that you would want. So you're having to kind of take a, a gamble of whether or not it will pay off, and it really did seem to pay off for them today. Right, yeah. As a follow-up, uh, Spike and Violin have found Blizzard in Disney Castle on the pop-up at Mini. So that is a very good offensive magic to find early. And yes, for those of you who are watching, we don't have the actual uh, item trackers available on the stream, um, but we're able to see when the worlds are going to be done for them, so we'll let you know. If you see them leave earlier than you would expect, it's probably because the world is already completed. Yeah, and we'll do our best to keep everybody updated as that happens. So yeah, uh, we have a sync between Violin and Spike going through this mini escort mission with these bolt towers and just doing the rea reaction command over and over to uh, keep both Mini and Sora safe. And we have uh, Rose and Hobbs in Agrabah at the same time. So you'll, you'll see some overlap pretty often in these co-op randomizer seeds because all racers have to complete every single uh, world to get all the important checks. Um, so it, it's just going to be inevitable. Hopefully what we'll see is that we'll see different things happen for different runners. Oh, and that's a very unfortunate death for Rose, having to uh, get around those chests in that uh, treacherous area. 
Now those enemies are super dangerous because they can either hit you with the crystal ball or they can shoot uh, like an icicle at you and on critical mode, you're really, you're more likely to get one shot than not for anything this early in the game. All right. Uh, so, uh, news. While everybody's going around and picking things up, do we have any donations to read? Oh, we have a lot of donations rolling in here in support for both KH2 and the Resident Evil Village Run. I have $50 from Sir Tyrone saying, roses are red, violets are blue. Let's all donate to see Resident Evil Village. I'm not that good at poetry. Keep up the good work, GDQ. I also have $20 from Nick saying, love KH2 Rando. Let's see some bears yeeted. In fact, I will donate $20 from every bear yeeted during the run. Wow. All right. So, oh, so for those who may not, not know, yeeting the bear is essentially finishing the end of uh, 100 Acre Wood at the end of the uh, the last page uh, the Pooh Bear is stuck in a, in a jar of honey so you gotta kinda spin him around and throw the honey pot off of his head so if we do get to yeet that bear if they have to go to that fifth page uh, we will probably see all four of them have to do that hmm. um, so in the meantime we found Cure on Wisdom Level 2 for uh, Rose and Hobbs So that is a very good safety net for uh, in case a party member dies or if Sora gets to low health. Although we probably won't see a ton of cure usage, these runners are incredibly like well versed with with the way that the bosses work in this game, as well as just you know not really having to take too much damage so they can minimize their downtime. Um, especially in Rando, it feels like cure. Uh, doesn't really get that much use because your mana is so important and being able to manage how much you have in order to maximize your damage. Um, especially whenever they pick up like a magnet or some extra thunders, um, being able to use those uh, spells during like big mob fights and even some boss fights um, will help them like speed up every fight. Right. So... I, I need to note that Rose is in Beast Castle right now, found the ability once more in a chest, and there's no more important checks in Beast Castle. We do not have to fight Zalvin today. Oh, and she also just found another quick run in that in that chest here in the hallway. So mm -hmm. Rose is choosing to pick up the extra chest in this room before she leaves, and that also seems to be paying out for her as well. She could have just walked out and left, and now she's being rewarded with uh, a, a dodge roll as well. So she's got two more movement abilities that is really going to speed up her exploration of these early worlds. Right. Uh, Hobbs is in Hollow Bastion for the first time, so we'll see what is there. Uh, Violin is following up or going into Space Paranoids for the first time for their team. And Spike is following into Halloween Town like we thought he would to get that glide. Um, now, one of the things we're going to notice here, um, if you're used to the base game and not the uh, the randomizer, is that all of our runners have started with five drive gauge. Normally, when you get your first drive, which is Valor Form in Twilight Town in the base game, you'd only have three. But because you can get Final Form at any time in the run, we had to give the runners a minimum of five drives so that they could actually use the form. Correct, yeah. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, your drive level, which the drive levels also have their rewards randomized, your level is determined by the amount of drives that you have available. So they're going to have up to seven levels for each drive, and each of those levels are going to have an item, but they need to collect all of the drives to get there. So right now, they only have a maximum of three levels available for Wisdom Form, but when they find another, they'll be able to go up to level four, and then five, et cetera, et cetera. Correct, yes. It's definitely really important for them to maximize their drive leveling while they're doing the normal game content. They don't want to go out of their way to have to farm if they can get away with it. 
um, just because that's more time you're losing to your opponents as they're really not gonna give you like much room uh, for error there. If you have to spend five minutes leveling up Valor Form because you didn't level it up like during a boss fight where you could have been using it, that could hurt you in the end. Right, so that's where the, the decision making of the runners will come in where they, they know what, what forms they need to level and what fights they have left. So they're gonna try to pick fights to try to make sure that they get those drive levels, especially since there is an important check still on drives to find. Yeah, but really the first probably 15 or 20 minutes of a Kingdom Hearts 2 randomizer run is just getting the easiest chest possible as quickly as possible. There's not a ton of very difficult forced fights in the early game of Kingdom Hearts 2. And on top of that, a lot of them, like Hobbs in the bottom right, they'll just end if you get your health low enough. So they don't even have to win the fights. They can just get into the world, take some damage, and then immediately start picking up 10 or 15 chests per world. So there's like 100 they're gonna pick up before they even have to do uh, any fights that these runners would consider to be a little bit more difficult. Right, yeah. Like there's there's sort of some quality of life abilities you'd want to find uh, to make certain fights easier. And that's what they're really looking for right now. But yeah, since we're really just in the opener and they're all kind of re-overlapping on worlds that their other uh, teammates have already done, we might have time for a, a donation or two if we want to read some of those out. Of course. I have uh, $25 from Dark Axel saying, looking forward to watching these Cage 2 worlds get blisted through. Good luck to all the runners, and let's see that data poo check. I also have $100 from Robin saying, I'm so excited to be watching a GDQ event live for the first time and donating. Discovered Cage 2 Rando through a GDQ hotfix last year, and it's now my favorite thing to watch. Good luck to all the runners. May the RNG be with you. I also have $250 from Anonymous saying, no way, that Demetrisk is amazing. Take my money. So it All looks right. like Hobbs just picked up the once more in Beast Castle as well, so now they know about that. Right. We have... Sp mm -hmm. Spike is going into Twilight Town for the first time. Which is... Yeah, Twilight Town is one of the... Yeah, it, it's one of the worlds with the most amount of checks in it. It's just so big compared to the other worlds in Kingdom Hearts 2. Mm -hmm. So leaving it off is a little dangerous just because... What is it, like 25 chests or something in the first section? Yeah, it's, it's a it's a lot. <laughs> now, a lot of the times our runners would choose to hold off on Twilight Town for a bit because it's a really good place to level up Final Four. Right. Uh, that, that goes back yeah. to that conversation you talked about earlier where you want to yeah. leave some places to level your drives along the way, but you have to also weigh that against, yeah. well, what if I find the form after the fight I'm saving that form for? Yeah, the forms are really the main uh, mechanic of Kingdom Hearts 2, at least the main added mechanic between each of the games. Um, and for those of you who may not know, the way that the forms level in this game is that you have to do like a certain action with each form. Valor form, you have to kill Heartless. Or, you know, just you have to hit Heartless. Uh, wisdom form, you have to kill them. Uh, master form requires drive orbs. Uh, limit form requires you to use the limits. And final form requires you to kill uh, nobodies specifically. And nobodies really mainly show up here in Twilight Town and in the final The World That Never Was. So there's not a ton of places to get good final form leveling while you're just doing your normal content. Um, but I don't think it's a bad idea for either of uh, Spike or Rose to be in Twilight Town right now. The, the information they could get here and the number of checks they're going to pick up could be very important to their, uh, their teammate. Correct. So just so everybody is aware, there, we know that there are some issues with the numbers on the screen for the trackers that it's getting worked on. It'll, it'll get taken care of. We'll try to update you as we can. Um, violin and violin is at four out of 37. Rose is at three out of 37. Hobbs is at four out of 37. And Spike is at two out, two out of 37. So we're, we're very much at the beginning. We'll, 
will make those numbers go up very soon with uh, more uh, chests being opened. Yeah, I mean, at 17 minutes, it's kind of the right amount of checks we would see here. <laughs> um, the once more and the wisdom form are really probably the most important things I've been able to pick up yet. Um, and then maybe the slide dash and the flash step are nice. But what we'd really want to see is some more like combo modifiers. Everyone loves explosion. You love finishing leap. You want to see maybe like magnet burst for that aerial uh, combo ability. Um, anything that gives you more AOE power to just blast through these larger mob fights um, could save them a minute or two for each fight. And it really starts to add up over a run that's nearly two and a half to three hours normally. Right. Yeah. Let's see. Let, let's just take stock of what everybody has right now. So we have found one negative combo, I think, in Disney Castle, which is a very mm -hmm. good combo ability. Um, the slide dash flash death that we found, we found glide and quick run. So our movement is getting better. Um, and we found a ton the, of keyblades. Yeah, a ton of keyblades. They they're rocking the six, seven, finishing plus two become one. Uh, keyblades are also randomized here, so randomized stats, randomized ability. It's probably going to be their keyblade for the run. If I'm guess. I I did see one keyblade with the experience boost ability on it. Um, the way that experience boost works is that if Sora is below half of his health, any um, kills that you do will give you twice as much of the normal EXP, which is wonderful for Rando because your levels and your stats really determine how quickly you can do this content. One of the exciting parts about the Kingdom Hearts 2 randomizer is that you could level up way past what you would normally be at in the base game and just turn these fights into just like five second magnet explosion, everything like blows up and you're done, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that experience boost might actually be really, really important to use, especially as they get later into the run where they're having to start to fight you know, world part two bosses. Maybe they're gonna go through the world that never was and have to fight Roxas. Uh, we do have the data organization members enabled for this run. It is an option when you make your randomizer seed. Um, so we are gonna probably see a couple of data fights have to be done by all four of the runners, which in my opinion is really exciting because beyond just the normal data speed runs that we've seen like in GDQ before, we're gonna see four different people approach them in probably four different ways. Right, and we know they're gonna be missing a tool of some kind because if they're fighting that data battle, it has an item that they need. And that item could be the second chance. It could be like final form. They could have the tool that they want for that boss, which is really scary for these runners. If they can't get the tools that they normally would need to do like their boss mechanics right, they could find themselves in a place that they're not 100% comfortable with. But all four of these runners are pretty consistent with this game and they always can find a way out of it if they don't have everything they need. Right, exactly. So uh, Hobbs is going into the world that never was probably just to get these first four checks before Roxas, but he might try to fight Roxas right now. We'll have to see. Meanwhile, Violin is going further into Hollow Bastion. It looks like Hobbs just picked up Valor form in, that, in those first four chests. That's actually a really okay. good thing to have this early. Right. Hobbs is going to fight Roxas. So, uh, Alios, do you want to discuss how Roxas is going to be beaten here? Well, there's a bit of a way to cheese Roxas if you don't have all the stats you want. And from what I can see, Hobbs is at like the 20s. He's got 20 strength right now. But for Roxas, you're really looking to have like 35 or above. So what he's going to do here is he's going to do the RC and steal Roxas's Keyblades. He's going to try to get him next to that back like invisible wall. And he's going to start just mashing the quick run button. When you quick... When you quick run while having Roxas's Keyblade stolen, they're just gonna start spinning around Sora. And Roxas is gonna get hit by them as they go by. One of the ways that this game does like balancing for the bosses, because you can actually knock them back and stun them, they have something called an RV value. And that RV value goes up as you do hits normally. And when it hits a certain point, 
they would automatically retaliate, and it kind of stops you from just comboing them infinitely. But the special thing about this spinning Keyblade Quick Run strat is that the Keyblades don't increase that value, which means Roxas is just going to be stuck here getting hit by the Keyblades forever until either he dies or J Hobbs misses his square button, essentially. Right, so Hobbs can just do that until Roxas is at 1 HP, and then he just does a finisher to kill the boss. This and really case... is the most consistent way to fight him if you don't have any other tool, that's for sure. Exactly. And if you want to see it done again, it looks like Violin is going to be doing the same thing. Yeah, and honestly, it's, it's a good idea. Um, even though you would save time not doing the strat, as you can see, his health doesn't go down that quickly. It takes about two minutes or so from once you start. But there's a lot of checks after you kill Roxas and then going up to where Zigbar is that they'll probably stop when they get up to Zigbar. But we're talking like 10 or 15 checks overall, and that could be important information for other runners. Right. What I'm expecting to see is that, like, so Spike went and grabbed Valor Form, but is not fighting Roxas now because he can come mm -hmm. back later and do it faster. Yeah. So Rosen... That really is the, the bonus yeah. of the co-op, isn't it? You get to use that information. Spike's going to save probably two minutes on that fight in the future when he comes back in if they don't find anything great after Roxas. Right, exactly. So Violin had a little bit of trouble setting it up, but it looks like Violin is good to go on the quick run, just making sure that the Keyblades continue to hit Roxas and he doesn't quick run too far away. This way. Yeah, oh, look, I think this is kind of... What? Uh, what are we playing on dollar three? That is very. Is it important. really? Oh wow! This is why you want to level up your forms as early as possible because you don't know what you're gonna get on them, and it is one of the only ways you can really get something out of like your normal routing. You, it's where the runners get to kind of show off like how they can utilize the forms in the most optimal ways, essentially. Right. And Spike also used that first fight in Beast Castle that Hobbs died to earlier to. Uh, get those Valor levels. So that was a very good uh, a route choice for Hobbs, or for Hobbs mm -hmm. and Spike as a team. Let's go. Yeah, let's see how many checks they have right now. We got five on Hobbs, four on Spike, another four for Rose, and another five. Uh, actually, six. Island has uh, six Island right has now with that Thunder in Hall of Bastion. Yeah, we didn't mention the Thunder in Hall of Bastion that uh, Violin has. Yeah, the first levels of the of the magic isn't always amazing. There's actually three levels for each magic. For those of you who might not know Kingdom Hearts as well, there's a, a fire, Fyra, Fyraga, Blizzard, Blizzara, Blizzaga, etc., etc., for all the different magic types. And the first one isn't great, but at least it provides you with something more than just slapping stuff with the Keyblade, right? Yeah. Having ranged options is very helpful as well, so you don't have to literally go up to the enemy and hit it with your Keyblade. You can hit it from a distance. Yeah, really being safe is probably one of the most important things for these runners, because every death is time that you're losing to your opponent, and it's really, really hard to gain that back, given how you know consistent all four of these runners are at, at getting through the, the entire rando. Right. Um, so... Uh, Spike is going into probably one of the hardest sections we've seen so far, this Hades Escape segment. Um, in a lot of the any percent runs, this is a run killer pretty early. Uh, so we'll have to see how Spike handles that. Does he have a... Um, I, don't, I don't think we've seen a... Uh, the, the, the metal. I, I have not seen the Olympus Stone at all. Yeah. No, nothing special happening in Olympus. Yeah, for the rando, we actually make it so that if you get the Olympus Stone early, you can use forms in OC earlier. Otherwise, they're sort of locked down because he's in the underworld. Um, so you could actually use forms here if you had it, which could speed up this by, you know, another 30 seconds. It's one of the longest force fights in the game. And as Zach said, it's one of the most dangerous ones if you're not prepared. Um, is Rose entering STT Ro right now? Rose is entering simulated Twilight Town or the Roxas portion of the run. Um, 
This is going to look a little different than the any percent, just so everyone is aware. Um, Roxas doesn't normally have things like movement or uh, other combat abilities. So what you'll see Rose do when she's moving around the world is she's going to be quick running, but Roxas does this weird thing with quick run where uh, Roxas will start the quick run and then immediately want to land on the ground. And it just looks like wave dashing. <laughs> and it's really funny to see. And we're about to see it uh, after this uh, cypher fight. So yeah, see <laughs> this weird hopping that Roxas does. Yeah, I'm actually surprised to see Rose coming in here this early because with the changes to the rando, normally STT is like, what is it, 15 or 20 minutes or so, even in the any percent run. It's a fair amount of time you have to spend here compared to a lot of the other world's general times. Mm -hmm. um, but the randomizer actually allows us to use limit form if we had it available here in, in simulated Twilight Town. You just would swap into limit form. You could use uh, like Ragnarok or R's and it would probably save a lot of time here. Um, I don't know if this was a decision that I would normally make. I mean, if you know me, I'm not a big fan of STT because of the time it takes, but there are 25, 30 checks here. And if Rose is able to find something really good, it could pay off in a long way if they're coming in this early. Right, exactly. So I think as a co-op team, this, this decision makes sense. Just getting the information about what is here that the other team is probably not going to get for a while. And one oh. of the other big changes... So there were torn pages in STT. That is a very big find. Already? Oh my god. Already. Yeah, the torn pages are needed to enter the rest of the world that never... Not the world that never was. <laughs> that data... 100 Acre Wood. My brain. 100 Acre Wood. Yeah. You gotta go through 100 Acre Wood with those those torn pages like you normally would. Normally you'd have to go to uh, what's it, Merlin's house in Hall of Bastion and give them the page in order to help rebuild the book. Um, but instead, there's just a big door in the back of GOA that you can enter, and it'll automatically add that page when you enter it. It's uh, actually a pretty good system instead of having to just you know, click on the book itself and watch that animation again. <laughs> um, just as a quick update, uh, Spike got through Hades Escape just fine, beat Cerberus, is now doing the Urns minigame. Uh, Violin is going through Twilight Town to follow up on the things that Rose found there. Hobbs is going into Port Royal with that blizzard that he has. I'm assuming that he's going to continue this, but he might leave and go somewhere else. And now Rose is going to do Twilight Thorn. Um, while this minigame is happening, it's going at about twice normal speed. But it's basically a mini game with their stats right now, so this is probably perfect time for some donations. Of course, we've got twenty-five dollars from Cross Fortune saying it's been a joy to watch you guys prep for this race. Wishing all of the best for the runners. I'm ecstatic this got into GDQ. Rooting for Spike and Hob. Let's <clears throat> let's eat the bear for charity. Donation goes towards Resident Evil Village, so we can see even more insane, talented runners doing what they do best. I also have $179 from Hartnick saying, Cage 2 Rando at AGDQ makes my heart Sora. Here's 358 over $2 to help the cause. I also just want to remind everyone that we do have a donation incentive going on right now for Resident Evil Village uh, that will be unlocked after this, that we have until the end of this run to unlock that incentive. Uh, right now, we're a little over $82,000 out of the 170 that we need for the incentive to get met. So please make sure to put your donations in towards that. You definitely want to see that run. And of course, we all want to see Lady Demetris. Oh yeah, we can definitely hit that one right, chat. We got a few hours, yeah. I believe. Mean, mm -hmm. yes. Oh yeah, there's plenty of time. Everybody in chat can donate some money to make that happen. I also, while while we're uh, talking about that, I uh, when we're running through all these worlds. I do want to ask everyone what their favorite Disney movie is. Uh, my personal favorite is Lion King. 
Maybe we can get some donations in cheering on your favorite Disney movie and putting that towards that Resident Evil incentive at the same time. Oh, yeah. I'm a, I'm a big fan of Mulan. I might have different thoughts about the Mulan world, but the movie, <laughs> that's another thing. My, my favorite Disney movie is Emperor's New Groove. Uh, oh, I, that one is, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's one I always forget about, but it, it definitely is super solid. Oh, yeah. When is that Emperor's New Groove Cage 2 world? If you mm -hmm. even ask for it, you know? Great. I, I wouldn't mind. Like, they could replace Atlantica. We don't... We actually don't get to do Atlantica in this, um, in this race, do we? We don't have those, um, items randomized. Correct. Yeah. Sadly, we don't get to sing along with the Atlantica songs, but, uh... In our hearts, we will always win. Right. We'll always be part of that world in our hearts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Now, sadly, right. it looks like J-Hobbs took a death in the minute fight earlier. Oh. That's a pretty rough time loss because you really can't... It's just 60 seconds and you have to survive, and if you die there, you lose any time that you had spent. It's, it's not much you can do to really speed that one up, sadly. Right. So, I believe Rose was using Auto Limit in uh, SDT to try to make these fights a little bit faster to bypass that... I or to make take advantage of the limit form in SDT modification. Mm -hmm. um, it takes a little while to do that, but that is a advantage of doing SDT early, is that you can trigger that auto limit. Also, it does look like Spike's uh, foray into OC is really paying off right now. He found a cure, Peter Pan, and a fire, all leading yeah. up to, uh, to Demix, which is crazy. And there's still yeah. more there, actually. That's a pretty that's a pretty full world. Yeah, Olympus Coliseum usually doesn't uh, give that much, but for this seed, yeah, it's it's doing really well. Yeah, the, the random community normally has a preference for like what worlds it likes to do earlier on in the seed, like before the hour mark. And OC is normally not one of them, but it's really paying off today. Right. Yeah. So just as a quick reminder of what is going on. We have a 2v2 co-op race with Violin and Rose on one team and then Spike and Hobbs on the other team. Their goal as a team is to find out where all 37 important checks are and then both members need to collect all those items and then beat the final bosses. So that is the goal of the, the C that they're doing right now. Uh, just to go over how many important checks each runner has right now. Violin has six out of 37. Rose has five out of 37. Spike has nine out of 37. And Hobbs has six out of 37. Now those numbers are gonna shift widely depending on what worlds have more things. So we'll we'll see those numbers kind of get closer toward the end of the seed. But for right now, Spike and Hobbs are slightly in the lead because they've gone to Olympus Coliseum first. Yeah, and that did definitely pay out a lot. He found another, he found a magnet as well, and the world still isn't done. OC is just juicy right now. Yeah, it, there's a lot of things there. And I did notice that Rose in the bottom left picked up the, uh, the Olympus Stone in STT, so now she has access to the forms. Wow, okay. Yeah, that's, that could be a major factor in... Uh, when fi finding out if drives are done sooner rather than later. Yeah, OC is a wonderful place to level up stuff like uh, Wisdom Form and and even Valor Form. There's just so many enemies you have to fight in those force fights. You might as well use your drives while you're doing it. Um, so we're seeing Hobbs just blizzard Barbosa to death with Wisdom Form and Blizzard. Mm -hmm. uh, Spike is using Peter Pan and Berserkers and TP2. Like, these are all things that you wouldn't be able to normally do in the base game. And it's uh, kind of interesting to see. Well, I guess the Wisdom Form on Barbosa is base game. Yeah, that's more vanilla. But, I mean, the, the, the Berserker fight here in TT2 that the Spike is doing right now is probably one of the most deadly fights um, for the randomizer, especially if you come in a little bit earlier, because they don't... They don't like to play nice. Those berserkers, you'll touch them and they'll like do a 360 no scope flip and they'll slap you in the face and get one shot because you're on crit. Mm -hmm. Right. And without and the right tools, like without a reflect or something, normally I'd be scared to go into that one. So props to Spike for doing that without the reflect at all. 
Right, exactly. And uh, he got a Blizzard for his trouble. So now he has Blizzard. Yeah, Spike's just on a roll right now. He's just, he's picking up everything. Everywhere he goes is just filled with, with the prizes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So, Violin is going to Land of Dragons, and I think this is our first actual uh, foray into uh, the actual Land of Dragons checks. Yeah, the early LOD checks are a little bit um, annoying sometimes because of the fact you have to play through like three mission mini games at the start to enter the rest of the world. Um, and a lot of them are just long, you know enemy gauntlets, essentially. Um, but it's also one of the worlds that has the most amount of checks all piled up near the end. So getting this done now is going to open up that option, and they could find a lot of stuff there um, if they're able to get into it fairly early. Right, yeah. It's like, finishing leap right there in, uh, in that first mission area is a very good find. Yeah, having an AOE finisher like that is probably one of the biggest things you're going to want to find in a, in a Kingdom Hearts 2 randomizer, um, mainly because these enemy fights are where most of your time is going to end up being spent beyond just, you know, running around the world with, with two glides or whatever. Right. Uh, Spike found Limit Form in Twilight Town, by the way. Is that all the way in TT3? That's pretty far back there. Yeah, that, that's toward the end of Twilight Town, but it, there's still more things there. Oh, wow. I mean, that's a great find um, for them, especially since they haven't entered Simulated Twilight Town yet. Um, Spike will save at least three, four minutes in STT over Rose if that ends up being the case. Right, exactly. Well, and we see Spike going there right now. Yeah, he, normally this is what you would want to do in this scenario. Limit form and having, he's got three quick runs now. He's going to be flying through this world and limit form is going to turn the struggle fights into just like, Press the button and go, and it'll, it'll save you at least 30 seconds for each of those fights. <laughs> uh, just as another update that we missed earlier, Violin went into Space Paranoids and did the Screens minigame. He found a fire after that, and the world is done after that. Well, that's really lucky. Space Paranoids 2 is probably, in my opinion, the hardest world to do consistently. The forced fights there are just painful. So being able to get that done now is, is definitely a Cypress Arise. Um, let's see. I think we're going to be seeing some overlap right now. So if we ha have any donations, pro now's probably a good time to read some. Yeah, I've got I've got some of those uh, Disney movies rolling in here. I've got $25 from Jake Cortez saying, I've been watching all the racers practice for this, and I'm super excited for this. I really hope we get to see them yeet the bear. My favorite Disney movie is Hercules, and everyone involved with GDQ is a true hero. I also have $25 from Steven just saying, best movie, Disney movie, is The Great Mouse Detective, which is actually one that I haven't seen, so maybe I'll have to check that one out. Um, I also have $50 from Toby, Tobe Toby saying, hey folks, happy Thursday. Here's to many more awesome speedruns and good vibes along with the event. Incentive goes to that Resident Evil Village. And just a quick update on that incentive. Uh, looks like we're a little over $89,000 raised towards that incentive um, out of $170,000. So keep those donations coming in. Keep letting me know your favorite Disney movies and keep putting those donations towards that incentive for Lady Demetrius. Did we have time for, do you want me to keep reading yeah. incentive or donations let's go one here? Let's go one, do one more. Yeah. All right. Um, I've got $5 from Toki saying, let's go Rose, Violin, Spike, and Hobbs. Have fun, like we said before, Twilight Thorn. Thorn Page gives you $100 for GDQ, and every super boss is five additional dollars. Yes, HT is still the best world. Thank you, Toki. Really appreciate it, buddy. Although, sorry about Halloween Town being a zero. You couldn't get it to death quickly. Yeah, was, I've been seeing a lot of donations here for HT, so I was wondering what what that meant, and now it's good to know, yeah, Halloween Town must be a favorite. <laughs> 
Yeah, really right now we only have Halloween Town and Beast Castle as like guaranteed done worlds and I guess Space Paranoids as well. Yeah, Space Paranoids is done. We know that for sure. Uh, Rose did not do the last Axel fight in Simulated Twilight Town. So we don't know if Data Roxas, the super boss at the end of Simulated Twilight Town, is like going to have something. Um, but it is very likely at this point that Data like Roxas is, is required for the seed. It's at least like a 50-50 chance or something now, right? There's only the two checks left there. Yeah, I, I think the chances are a little bit higher due to the item waiting. Uh, by the way, Spike is uh, hopping on Kyrie's face there in SCT. I want to call that out. But he's doing it at double speed. <laughs> yep, he's doing it at double speed, so he can't do his full uh, RNG manip of jumping on everybody's faces. Yeah, there are a lot of quality of life um, systems that we've added uh, for the randomizer community just to help reduce the uh, overall time we have to spend on each and every run, because otherwise you'd be spending 30 minutes in simulated Twilight Town and you'd have to spend even more time uh, in places like OC uh, without some of the changes that we've made. Um, what kind of changes do we actually have compared to the vanilla, Zach? That's it. In, like, Simulated Twilight Town? Well, in general, because we have, um, oh. we have days that are just, like, being skipped. All the mini-games in the, was it Day 5? Yeah, I believe it's Day 5. So, normally in the base game, you have to do a bunch, you have to do the Seven Wonders mini-games, where, like, you dodge some balls and ride a sack of That's something. It. We don't know what's in the in the sack. You just have to calm it down. Uh, you all those like data BB. Yeah, yeah, it's all they're all gone. They don't have any checks on them and they take a really long time. So the community was just like, eh. Do those in the any percent. Right. Um so Spike was on Twilight Thorn there, was not able to kill Twilight Thorn after the first like reaction command mini game. So he had to go through the mini game again in order to finish the fight. So that's a little bit of a slowdown. Uh, I think Rose had to do the same thing, but so it, it's it's a wash. It looks like Rose has uh, forced final form. She must have found uh, light and dark. Yeah, it, I guess, or using auto final potentially. Well, we'll have to yeah, it is, it is. to see what happens. Yeah, it is a good ability to have, especially here in the second part of Twilight Town, because the, all these enemies are nobodies, so you can level up Final Form in this fight, and Final Form makes it a little bit safer, but it looks like she had gotten slapped by one of those Berserkers like I mentioned earlier. They will come out of nowhere and just hit you immediately. And then we can see on the top right Spike using, using Limit Form to, to speed up the... Uh, the struggle fights, as well as the fight with Axel there, you can just normally press one limit and either all the struggle orbs are going to fall out or Axel just can't handle a single one of them and then you get to get through that fight real quickly. Without that, you end up being stuck um, just swinging your foam bat. Uh, Violin is using any percent strategies on Cerberus, getting Mickey to uh, deal a bunch of damage to Cerberus and then reviving Sora and finishing the fight that way. Yeah, Mickey can't get the final hit on bosses. It has to be Sora. Um, so you'd have to get the drive refilled and then resurrect Sora and able to finish the fight. Normally it is faster though than just fighting him if you don't have the stats. Right. And that means he gets you to pick up that cure and start to find the many other things that are still left in OC. Correct, yeah. All right, so Rose is having some problems with that Berserker's fight, so he's gonna go and collect some more things and try it again later, maybe with uh, another tool or two. Yeah, and that's definitely the, uh, the right option here, in my opinion. If you're stuck somewhere in the rando and you feel like it's just not working out, just go somewhere else and pick some other things up and come back when you have more tools or more levels. It's only gonna speed up the rest of the run. Exactly, and that's one of the best things about this randomizer is that Sometimes you'll get stuck on a fight. You can just go somewhere else and look for more things. You're not hard locked at doing that thing and you have to figure it out right then. Yeah, I mean, that's really one of the things that I enjoy the most about 
this randomizer is just that freedom to be like, okay, I'm done here, I'm gonna go somewhere else now. You know, if you're not feeling it, you can just do any kind of content you want. You can start to optimize different types of fights based off the abilities that you have. There's so many decisions that you get to make um, that can make or break like a, a race, especially in a co-op scenario where you guys can start sharing what you're picking up and where it is and trying to puzzle out exactly what the, the perfect, you know, set of abilities you need for the rest of your, your seed. Uh, I want to point uh, out that Hobbs is doing the Hydro fight in Olympus Coliseum. Normally, you would not have Thunder here, so hitting the Hydra heads is very difficult to do. But with Thunder, you can just use Thunder. <laughs> it just makes the the Hydra fight so much easier. Yeah, the devs like perfect. Isn't Thunder on Hydra in the Thunder vanilla? is on Hydra in vanilla. Yeah. Yeah, it's so mean. It just purposefully makes us wait for it, and it's the best ability to have against it. It just feels so good. Um, now, Hobbs did get Reflect on levels. Um, okay. So that must so it looks like been, that might be around level 20. Yeah, it probably is level 20. Yeah, that's a really, really good... Level right now. Yeah, Reflect is probably the most important tool you're going to want in a randomizer run. It gives you invincibility frames. It does damage. It allows you to like continue combos while an enemy is hitting you because you can extend those invincibility frames by like doing an attack after the reflect. I mean, it's got so many uses. It's it's probably the most abusable spell in the entire game if you get it earlier than you're supposed to, which Brando lets you get it whenever. Right, yeah. All right, so Spike is going to finish off Simulated Twilight Town to find out if we have to do Data Roxas this seat or not. I'm kind of... Um, I'm on the edge of my seat trying to figure out if we're going to have to see Data Roxas today or not. I, I want to see Data Roxas. He's one of the harder Data bosses to fight, um, and his, his, like, you know, loops that you can do with him are one of the more interesting ones, in my opinion. I just, I really like the way they balance Roxas in this game, and he just feels like he's the most fair. <laughs> so yeah, we're, there's one more chest to open after this uh, Axel fight as Roxas. And once we see what that is, we'll know for sure if uh, Data Roxas is required. How many datas do you want to see in this run? Like, what is your what is your favorite number if we're gonna to have to to fight a lot of them? I I would say I want to see like four or five super bosses. I think that's a four good or number. five. Yeah. Oh my god, we're gonna extend the we're gonna extend the time for the run if we have four or five. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, it is Data Roxas. We have a oh. guaranteed Data Roxas fight for finishing this seed. Oh boy. Well, at least they got one EXP boost. I would want to get levels for that. That fight's really scary if you're not leveled up. Right, so we'll, we might see that happen uh, for everybody at some point, depending on how many other uh, super boss fights end up showing up. Yeah, it's it's definitely one of those things that you're going to leave until the end. Like, I ain't touching that boy. I, I'm not getting over there until we're done with the rest of the seed, because he is horrifying. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I do want to briefly mention that just because Spike and Hobbs have more uh, important checks found doesn't mean they're necessarily ahead right now, just because there are so many things still left behind. Like, at the moment they have more things, but they also have not gone into, like, more of... Um, like Hall of Bastion, which Violin is going to do, and Agrava, which Rose is going to do right now. And like LOD, they're, Spike and Hobbs are doing right now, but Violin has already done this content. So just use that number as a way to measure how much they've collected, but maybe not as much content that, that they've done. Yeah, a lot of the times you're going to see that these numbers are going to get closer and closer as we get closer to uh, like the midway point of the run, because a lot of the checks, like like 80% of the checks in this game are in the first half, the first 60% of the actual content. The rest is like bosses, longer part two fights, super bosses, and those take a lot longer for a lot less number of like, you know, important checks they can get overall. 
So we'll probably see them close in as they start to merge the kind of content that they have done. <laughs> and while it might not look like an incredibly like close race right now, I promise you as we get farther to the end, it's gonna get kind of, you're not gonna be able to tell anymore. Exactly. So Violin is heading into the Cavern of Remembrance. It's the bonus area that was added in Final Mix. Uh, there are about 20 chests in here that can be collected. Uh, and normally those checks are uh, blocked off by some pretty difficult fights. I would imagine that Violin is going to try to skip into those uh, chests to skip the fights and collect most of them that are here. Yeah, we'll see so. if he attempts it. The core skip is not something you would normally know much about without Randall, but it does look like he's going to try. Oh, yeah. So you set up this clip into the out-of-bounds area. You then land on this ledge outside of the intended area, and you use your movement to get across that gap and then go into this load zone, and there it is. You skipped the first fight of core. That was that was beautiful. That was so clean. If you fall out of there, we've thankfully made like a safe load zone. It'll bring you back up top. But normally that would just like, you, your game would be soft locked. Yeah, you would have to hard close your game and restart from the same. Yeah, but doing this skip, like Zach had said, there's those fights are too difficult right now, but this gives you access to all of those checks incredibly early. So this could be big. So you get this have last. To... Oh no! Well, you have to hit all three of these. You have to get all three of the the uh, valves here down to zero health, so that you can make your way through the rest. It causes uh, some of the platforms and core to start moving and lets you get around easier. Mm -hmm. There's also an invisible um, if... wall for the second part of the skip that mm -hmm. is there if you don't do that. Uh, do those valves. Oh, it looks like he might not be doing the rest of the uh, the core skip though right now. He might not be able to get up that well, you think? Right, I, th I think that is what happened. Like, he lost his wisdom form there, which I think he was mm -hmm. going to try to use to gain some height. Mm -hmm. um, since he lost his drive, he's going to do some other content and come back later. Yeah. In the bottom left, we can see that Rose has also chosen to do the uh, quick run strat for Roxas. So she'll spend about two minutes just... Roxas is going to get hit by this for everyone. I think Spike might be more inclined to try to fight Roxas instead of doing uh, the skip. I think he mentioned that he, would, he was just going to want to try to do that. Um, but if you do die, if you make a mistake on that Roxas fight, you end up losing time over doing the skip. <laughs> so, so you're having to make that mistake. Yeah, yeah based, based on Spike's practice, he's going to fight Roxas, especially since he has Finishing Plus and Limit Form. I think he might just be waiting on stats, and he'll level at some point to, to do that. Yeah, all of the runners, um, from what I can tell, they're very similar in their, their their stat spread. Everyone's around the exact same point, so they're all they all have the same like power level comparatively. No one is going to be slamming through. Uh, bosses or force fights um, much faster than the other right now. If someone chooses to start to uh, farm some levels later, um, we may see them move ahead uh, just speed-wise in the fights, but you're having to lose that farm time to get that back. Mm -hmm. right. So Spike is going to get into the Twilight Town Mansion, which is another hotbed of uh, chests to open. Uh, and it looks like Hobbs is going to be falling right behind. Now that they know that Data Rocks is, is uh, required, they might be just going to Twilight Town 3 to level. Mm -hmm. um, so that is seems likely. And then Violin is doing Port Royal, which Hobbs has already done up to the second visit boss and has not found anything yet. And then Rose is just finishing up the checks after Roxas and we'll figure out where she's going next. But it's probably a good time for some donations. I have tons and tons of Disney movies coming in here. I have $50 from Strong Paws saying, here to represent the best underrated Disney movie, Brother Bear. Putting this towards the Resident Evil run so that we can tell everybody that it's on its way. And can I, and if I, can I add, 
These runners must have the keen eye to spot all the checks. I'm sure it's harder than it looks, so I won't took it for granted. But I hope they find them quickly and don't get stuck in a rut. Hopefully their speed doesn't stress the game's coda too much. Thank you, Strong Paws, for all those great Brother Bear puns. Definitely a very, very underrated Disney movie there. Um, I, I would love to see more donations like that. Give me your Disney puns. Give me your Disney movies. Put them towards Lady Demetrius. Uh, speaking of which, I also have $50 from Big Chill saying, Lady Demetrius is fantastic, but we need the RE8 run to display the truly huge majesty of the Duke. Also, The Great Mouse Detective is my favorite Disney movie. Thank you, Big Chill. Appreciate that donation. We have time right. for one more? Yeah, one more. One more. All right. I have $50 from Invictus Rex saying, can we get some love for favorite Disney songs too? Mine is Be Prepared from The Lion King, which is also my favorite Disney movie. Yeah, well, we'll have to... We'll have to just figure that out ourselves, what our favorite Disney song is. Uh, Rose is hard forcing Final Form. So, uh, Alios, how does that work in this game? Uh, so, one of the ways, well, the original way you get Final Form in the vanilla game is that you have to uh, get Anti Form. And every time you go into Anti Form, there's a chance that you'll go into Final Form instead. And the way that you go into Anti Form, as you can see Rose doing right now, is just keep going into forms and then there's a chance it'll happen. You essentially gain anti-points in the background for every form that you enter and as those points grow, it increases the chance that you'll enter anti-form. Um, normally, with the way that the, uh, the chances of hitting final form work, after the fourth or fifth time you've entered anti-form, you're more or less guaranteed to get final form. Uh, now, honestly, they're an hour into this run now, and they haven't seen anything that would give them final form, like uh, the light and darkness ability, which would guarantee you to go into anti-form when you use a form. Um, so Rose is going to spend just a few minutes here um, to get her that uh, final form earlier. And honestly, it's such a powerful option that I think it's the right choice right now. Right, and there it is. There's Final Form. So now, Rose will have Final Form for the rest of the, of the run, but will need to still find the Final Form that is out there somewhere in a chest or a pop-up. Yeah, when she does, it, it'll just fill in the tracker for herself. Um, it's not, she's not going to get, like, two Final Forms or anything like that. Um, but it is the rules of the community is that even if you force it, you still have to go and find it in the world somewhere if that's part of the rules for finishing the race. Exactly. I guess that's one of the other things that's really, like, cool about the way that this randomizer works is there's no set rule for, like, what determines that a, a rando run is complete. You kind of get to make that decision yourself. Does it have to be defeating final Zemnus? Is it just get all the checks? Is it get to 100 Acre Wood and yeet the bear? Like, you can play the game in any way that you want, in any order you want, with any set of rules, as the seed generator itself can give you the option to kind of turn on and off whatever you want. Right. There is a hard requirement to do the final bosses that you find all three proofs. That's part of the, the World Hub mod that's in use here. But... Uh, beyond that, like, you, yeah, you just make whatever conditions you want to say the seed is, quote, done. And just to remind everybody what the, the goal here is, uh, it is a 2v2 co-op, Violin and Rose versus Spike and Hobbs. Both racers on a team need to find all 37, quote, important checks, and then beat Final Zemmets. And the numbers in the middle of the screen show each runner's total count of important checks. So Spike and Hobbs both have 13, Violin has 11, Rose has eight. So since we're seeing a couple of worlds that the other runners have kind of already, some of them have gone through it once already, what is your favorite world, Zach? Like what, what, when you play Randa, what do you always look forward to entering? 
Honestly, I, I look forward to when I go into Space Paranoids because that means I'm going to level grind and I'm going to make the rest of the seed easier. <laughs> have we talked That's about level grinding in Space Paranoids before? I don't think we have because both Rose and Violin have decided to not level there. Yeah, why don't we go over? What, what, what exactly do you have to do to level grind in Space Paranoids? Right, so this is... The any percent route also does this, but with an experience boost or two in randomizer. If you get below half health, you can trigger those e -exper experience boosts, and you'll gain double or triple experience with those. Off. The idea is that you want to go into the screens mini game, where for two minutes you'll spawn infinite amount of enemies, and if you can just continue to kill those enemies, you'll gain a ton of experience very quickly. So in Randomizer, you can go in with a lot of magnets, some thunder, maybe explosion, and a really high magic stat, and you can just fly through levels really, really quickly. Yeah, really high magic stat with like a level three magnet is so powerful in this game because a lot of the times it just one shots your enemies. I mean, we can kind of see on the small magnet that J-Hops is using for that, uh, the Agrabah fight, it just pulls stuff in and they're immediately just getting destroyed and it's causing the new ones to summon in and a lot of the fights are summoning in multiple waves of heartless so if you have magnet earlier than you normally would you'll see these these uh enemy fights just get like wasted hmm. all right so hobbs is actually doing the first visit boss of agrava the twin lords um and it looks like it's gonna be very close to uh the any percent or like tools you would have in the any percent route with Valor form here. He's just yeah, the using Valor form these, all over. Mm, the big thing with these bosses is that every time you get them to a certain like uh, level of health, they're gonna explode and like little mini Heartless are gonna come out and you have to get rid of those before the actual boss will show up again. Um, which makes Valor form actually really good for it because one of the air finishers is a big AoE. You can hit them as they come out, and it'll save you a lot of time, because otherwise you're having to like go pick them off one by one. Um, in Rando, it can be cool to have like a magnet there as well, because the magnet will pull them in, immediately cause the boss to respawn, and then you can just like use a thunder or something. Um, since we're early in the run right now, they don't really have like the crazy stats that we're gonna see as we get to like the two-hour mark. Um, but that means they can start defaulting to some of the like any percent routing where it's a little closer to what they normally would have and that always works just as well it's not a big difference in time right so do we have uh, time for a couple yeah. more incentives here or yeah. sorry donations here I, we need to meet that incentive that's why i'm the yep. one incentive not multiple incentives <laughs> Uh, we are at $98,000, everyone, towards that Resident Evil Village. We do need a total of 170, though, so we're getting close. We need about 72,000 left, so please keep those donations coming in. Um, on that note, I do have a donation in the form of a song here. Uh, $25 from Mr. Game and Shout saying, Let's get down to business so we get the run did they send me dollars when i asked for sons you're the cutest chat i've ever met that's how i know before we're through we will see religion gdq Thank you, Mr. Game and Shout. I appreciate that song pushing for that Resident Evil Village that we all definitely want to see tonight. That was that's the kind of stuff I love to see. I love to see from chat, like just the amount of of a uh, passion that people have for the games here and and, and for the the event itself. It, it's wonderful seeing people come together for that. Yeah, uh, okay. you better hit that incentive, guys. Yeah. I'm keeping. I'm, I'm watching y'all like a hawk. You better get there. I have faith that cute chat can meet this goal, and I, I definitely want to see this run tonight. It's going to be super, super awesome. And plus, don't we all want to just extend the marathon? I want to see more speed runs. You want to see more speed runs. Let's get those donations in. 
All right, so let, let's update everybody on like uh, what everyone's doing. So Violin is doing Twilight Town 3, following up a bit right behind Rose. Rose is doing the mansion fight in Twilight Town 3. Uh, Spike is doing some level grinding of some kind in Twilight Town 3 as well, and Hobbs is going to simulate a Twilight Town to uh, just clear this out and prep for Data Roxas. It's really a, twi a Twilight Town uh, bonanza, isn't it? Yeah, it's just Twilight Town everywhere. I mean, it, it is the biggest world in the game, and there's just so much content here that I guess we're bound to see, like, I'm surprised we're seeing all, all of them in the same place at once, but it's just, it's so versatile. You have level grinding, like Spike is doing up in the top right, final form and fire, and then using that EXP boost on the Keyblade. Um, these are, Twilight Town 3 is essentially the end of the base game. So these are the highest-ish level enemies that you're gonna be able to fight in the game when it comes to like getting EXP. Mm -hmm. So using Final Form and Fire here sort of kills two birds with one stone. You get the Final Form levels because you're defeating the uh, nobodies, and you also get levels for Sora from enemies that you know are gonna give you the most amount of EXP in the game, right? Right, exactly. So <laughs> it's, it's definitely a very good double dip spot. Mm -hmm. This is definitely the play that I would be making if I was if I was in this run right now. Um, I think the auto final usage here um, from all the runners has been kind of crazy because you have to get your health to red health to use an auto form, and that can be kind of scary, um, especially since every death can take so much time away from your run. I think this is a this is a wonderful play for Spike. Right. So Spike does not have second chance for what's worth, which would be a very safe way to get into auto final. So. Once more does help, where you can withstand a combo hit. That's the renamed version of the ability. Um, but it's still a dangerous thing to do. Yeah, I would be. I'd be afraid to attempt to get into it. Right. So I don't think we've seen them. So, so Twilight Town not being done is kind of scary as well. There's really only the the uh, the fight with Axel, and then. The data yeah, axle fight. Yeah, you you do a co-op with Axel, and then uh, you have to fight Data Axel if he doesn't give you the important checks there. Yeah, we end up having to move the datas. Uh, obviously, the, the GOA doors are being used for the world, so you have to ask, well, where where the datas go, right? How do I get to those? And they've all been more or less moved to the end of the world that you know the community felt it just fit. That's where they should be if they had to be anywhere else. Um, I think, what is it, Luxord is in the end of Port Royal. Mm -hmm. Axel is here in Twilight Town and Roxas in simulated Twilight Town. Um, Data Demix is in Hall of Bastion. Right, exactly. So at the end of a world, there's always a super boss that's available that you might have to be. Um, so that's why, like, Rose and Spike leveling makes a lot of sense here because, like, they know they have one data potentially. I think Rose suspects that it's Data Roxas, doesn't know for sure yet. Mm -hmm. um, but now Spike has found Thunder on level 34. So, and now levels don't have any more important checks. So, any leveling that Spike does from now on is just for stats. Yeah, and Spike's stats right now are looking amazing. He's got 36 strength and 43 magic, which means all of the content in the game, the, the stats that you kind of want at the end, I think 35-ish is about, like, your your uh, your sweet spot mm -hmm. um, for places like Twilight Town and then the world that never was. So Spike technically, at least for now, doesn't have to do much more leveling. Now we're going to see, it looks like he's going to try to do some um, some screens leveling right now, actually, now that we're, we're mentioning it. This is, he's on great... Uh, time and he's actually been utilizing his um, available tools uh, really well. He's putting himself in a wonderful position for when he eventually goes to the world that never was and then starts doing like the data bosses that we're seeing. Exactly. But yeah, he's being very careful to uh, not die to these infinitely spawning enemies. And he's trying to manage his MP so he can continue doing those thunders. 
but it looks like he's going to be safe and you're just going to switch over to leveling Valor form. Yeah, th this, these enemies are, are very scary because Space Paranoids is not one of the earliest worlds in the game and their actual battle level is still the same as it would be for Vanilla. Um, it looks like he decided just to say, you know what, I'm not fully ready for this and I don't want to lose that time to a death, so he's just going to move forward. Mm -hmm. um, but he did get a, a level or two out of that, so definitely not in a complete waste of time. Right. Plus he's going to find the, uh, what did we have, uh, there was a fire here, I believe. He's going to be able to pick that up now as well. Um, so, Violin is having some technical difficulties with his tracker. It'll get taken care of. Um, uh, it should should not take too long to get that taken care of. Um, yeah, he'll be right back into it soon enough. Um, perhaps right now would be uh, time for some more like donations. Yeah. yeah, I've got a ton of donations here. We got $50 from D Nexus saying, come on guys, we just need a quick $5 train from one fifth of the chat right now. And we've got RE8 unlocked hands down. My favorite Disney movie is a tie between half a dozen at least. So I'll just throw Nightmare Before Christmas in the mix. Also to answer our commentators, I want all the super fights in this run. Love the Cage series when it first came out as a young teen. And this $50 will be for our RE8 incentive, my love for the game, and for this charity event. I also have $100 from Moon DX saying, Spike, for the love of God, do chickens! Wait, wrong randomizer. Good luck to all the runners. Let's get this Resident Evil Village bonus game. Oh, and the best Disney movie is Sword in the Stone. Uh, just a quick update on that incentive, everyone. We are a little over $100,000 met towards that incentive. We do need a little less than $70,000 to meet that incentive, so please keep those donations coming in. Keep letting me know your favorite Disney movies. Maybe throw in some songs as well. Uh, and put those donations all towards Resident Evil Village. You definitely want to see that run tonight. Do it for Lady Demetrius. I know we all want to see her. Do we have until the end of this run to hit that incentive? We do. That's yeah. So this is this is the last run to get that incentive met. So we uh, we got to get those in here. We've got you know uh, this run got a couple hours left, depending on how the RNG treats our runners here. So could be less than that. So make sure you keep those coming in as much as you can. I think that yeah, I would be a great thing to see that $5 train. Yeah. yeah, I know I know we can do it, guys. We got this. We got at least an hour and a half, if not two hours more of this seed at the very minimum. And if we, if we keep seeing more of the data bosses, I think that's definitely going to end up happening. Now we are seeing, let's see, Spike is entering into uh, OC2 now, which means he has to do these uh, preliminary, uh, you know, Hades Cup kind of fights uh, before moving on to the actual uh, second half of the world that has all the checks in it. Uh, most likely we're going to see Hades himself have the final check. It's, uh, there's not, there's only two or three checks actually in part two of OC, um, and Hades seems to always hold on to the last one. So hopefully we get to see that fight. Um, having the blizzards and the magic stat that he has, I'd be using like Final Form Blizzard to fight Hades at this point. Um, he can be a little bit difficult otherwise. I mean, all the part two bosses are uh, fairly uh, aggressive is the best way to put it. They have a lot of health and they do a lot of damage and they don't give you much time to, uh, to get that damage in if you're not prepared. So hopefully we'll get to see him do Hades. And if the uh, the check isn't on Hades, uh, what's the absence of the web set? Which one? Uh, Zexy. Zexy, book nerd. I would like to <laughs> see a book nerd fight today. Final form on 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 Zexy and is is absolutely wonderful to watch. All right, so. It looks like Rose is going to be leveling more forms in uh, Disney Castle. 
trying to find any more important checks on those drive forms. Mm -hmm. We know there's at least one more somewhere. Yeah, this is actually one of the best places to be farming levels for Wisdom Form. There's just so many of these small shadows and every uh, shadow kill, there's like one EXP for the form. Uh, we have slightly increased the uh, EXP multiplier for the forms for Rando. Um, normally for something like Valor Form, it's like thousands of hits to get it to level seven. Yeah. Um, but in order to make it less of a uh, the horrible farm we've multiplied it. Is it like times seven or something for this I, run? I believe it is times seven, yeah. Yeah, it's seven times times seven. Less. It still takes like a few minutes at least. It takes like five minutes to get Valor to seven, even at times seven. It's just, it's absurd the amount that they require in the original. So um, without that, we would be we'd be here for at least half an hour. <laughs> so Spike is on Hades right now and is using Wisdom Form to. Uh, try to do some damage with those blizzards. But Hades is just relentless with the fire and the fire pools on the ground. Yeah, he's one of the most um, the most dangerous fights for part two, just because of, of the invincibility he gives himself. You have all the fire on the ground and then the fire orb in the air, and you have to use um, Hercules' uh, those yellow orbs to... <gasps> The oh. orb went away as he pressed the reaction command and then the fire came down. That's so unlucky. That's... Yeah. It looks like he might be deciding to leave and come back when he has some more tools for him. He really is a scary fight, and it's just, sometimes you're limited to Hercules like playing nice for it, so I don't blame that at all. Right, exactly. I think he's making the right decision. He's gonna move over to um, the the Windows fights here in Timeless River. He'll probably try to uh, level up Valor Form to five since he has that level available to him. And there's just a lot of small enemies that Valor Form can get a ton of hits on in this in the uh, the small spaces in the windows. So um, I think he's making a good tactical play to move away from that and come back a bit later. Yeah, it's definitely good to just mentally reset and uh, come back later when you have another tool or two. Like mm -hmm. we, we saw this happen with Rose earlier, so it's definitely a good idea to just to kind of reset and do something else. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, Rose is in Simulated Twilight Town. Looks like she's going to be leveling up limit form here. Uh, do you want to describe to the chat how this works exactly? Right, so a quirk of STT, or maybe it's the mod itself, is that you don't actually lose drive gauge in Simulated Twilight Town when you go into Limit Form. So because Limit Form levels up by finishing these limits, Rose is just going to continuously go into Limit Form, do a limit, and do another limit, makes her MP go down to zero, goes into MP charge, and then goes into a dry form again, which refills her magic. And she can just repeat this over and over until she gets the maximum level that Limit Form can give her right now, which is six. She has four forms, so she can get to limit level six. Yeah, every limit that she does is one more point of the XP. She probably has to do like 15 or 20 overall to get to the level six at this point. So um, this is the fastest way you would do it. Um, because you gotta refill your mana and not waste your ethers or elixirs or whatever you choose to use. This is definitely um, a, a quirk of Rando you would only know if you had been playing the randomizer for a while. Right, yeah. It is definitely the fastest way to level. It's just, it's kind of unintuitive if you've never seen it. So uh, it's good to call that out. Um, yeah, and the fact that she has the... Um, the enemy up above so she can just use the limit into the wall without killing it makes it a bit easier if you um, don't have any enemies around you um, and you don't go into the form fast enough uh, you may leave combat and you can't use the limits outside of combat yeah um, exactly. so it actually is a really good idea to get them there so then she can safely just start farming those levels right uh so it looks like rose is gonna do zigbar Oh, and she just put the Berserk uh, Charge Keyblade on as well. I believe she has Horizontal Slash? I don't think she does. Does she not have that yet? I th if we didn't see it, then she may be preparing for a uh, using Final Form. 
Mm-hmm. R- Rose is the only one who has actually forced out Final Form and has it not on an auto ability, I believe. It's really paying off, isn't it? Mm-hmm. It, it has allowed her to level really quickly, got that thunder on the late uh, level check. Mm-hmm. And now she has stats for all these boss fights in the world that never was. Yeah, she is definitely way above the stat requirements for this world. She's going to be doing a ton of damage to Zigbar. Um, now, most likely what she's going to be doing is she's going to try to get Zigbar to take Sora into a secondary uh, room. Inside of this room, as long as she doesn't make Zigbar leave, he won't DM. He won't have his his DM move um, occur where he's going to pull you another room and just start like shooting you in a big circle. This should allow her to get his health low enough, and she, if she, if she, if she doesn't have to, um, then she may just use final form, not use any finishers, because using a finisher would pull him out of the room. So she'll use two fires to hit the ground, and then hopefully loop it. It looks like he got out. It's a little hard to do without Fyraga. Mm-hmm, yeah. Um, th- to mention, like normally you would have Fyra at this point in the game, in any percent. Oh, no. Only base fire, it's very difficult to do. And Rose did it perfectly. Yeah, she. I don't think that the finisher there was intended, but thankfully she was able to pick it back up before he went into his DM, because he was guaranteed at that point. Um, when he had a chance, he was going to DM, and then he's invincible for like 30 seconds. Yeah, it's definitely a time waster. It's not really that dangerous, because with Glide, you can just avoid all the lasers. But yeah, that was definitely a very good fight from Rose. Oh, and the second experience boost yeah. is after Zigbar. That's so mean, Zigbar. So yeah, Zigbar was uh, holding an experience boost, which would have made the level grind a little bit faster. Uh, it's really ironic that the thing you want to level grind for is hiding the thing that would make your experience leveling uh, much faster. <laughs> yeah, that's one of those big parts of the decision making is like you're kind of trying to weigh, you know, if I do this and I don't find something, was it worth it? If I do, like, is am I willing to take that chance? You're just flipping a coin sometimes. And, um, you know, sometimes it pays off and sometimes you get a an EXP boost right after you finished level grinding. <laughs> Yeah, so I think she found an auto master somewhere in there. But now she's going to level master form. Oh, wow. Yes. Yeah, she's going just straight for it. Yeah, so ma- master form levels up with drive orbs. And with the ability drive converter, these gamblers that normally just drop money will now drop drive orbs, and you can level master form here. And you can do this in the vanilla game. It works just the same. Yeah, it's definitely the most optimal um, location to do it if you have the drive converters. Master Form's a little bit difficult without that drive converter, but thankfully they they found one already. So um, she's going to have almost all the drive forms done. She's the first person to even get them this high. Everyone else has them at five at the most. Mm -hmm. So this is a big play for Rose. And and So Spike just finished Hades, by the way, and we do have to fight Vex. Oh my, so we have we have Data Roxas and Zexia and probably Data Axel at this rate. Oh yeah, we don't we don't know if it's Data Axel or not. <laughs> so we I'm gonna put my money on Data Axel at this point. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> knowing knowing how this seat is going. Um But let's see, we have Oh J Hobbs is doing um the core skip as well. He might actually do the full skip at this point, although he may have trouble getting high enough in the second half. Let's see if he can grab this ledge. He, he's having problems with the, the clip. I wonder yeah, if the Donald way, is messing with that. Yeah, he's Donald standing right on top of where his hand is supposed to go. Oh, there we go. Yeah, plenty of aerial dodges. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. He'll be able to make it all the way to the end here. Oh, no, he fell. Oh, he didn't have combo master, so he couldn't continue his, his air combo to move forward a little bit more. Yeah, he could have kept his momentum with a reflect there, I think, but... Uh, luckily, the uh, safety uh, load zone at the bottom is there, so no soft lock. Can mm-hmm. drag in. Gather. It's very interesting that we're seeing uh, Rose go in to uh, get into four, and Hobbs is there as well. 
Yeah, a lot of the times we're gonna we're gonna find them like overlapping a bit, um, especially in this middle part where uh, they're running out of very easy places to get stuff. It's just like there's not gonna be a ton of areas that have five or ten chests like all in the same place they can just run to. Okay. Now they're having to decide what type of content is fastest for them and and what type of content they're they're comfortable trying to complete at this stage in the game. Right. Exactly. Um, so. Hobbs is going to getting going over to this vertical segment of the core skip where he's going to try to glide up this wall. And it's looking like with glide level two, it's very slow. He's going to try to get into that little nook there and hopefully uh, go into a form at that point to kind of reset his movement. Stay at that height and then aerial dodge after reverting is what might yeah. be. I don't, if he doesn't just use like a, a magic and then an aerial dodge, he's probably going to go into wisdom form and spam some fires. Then he's going to revert from wisdom and do an aerial dodge. All right, he, he Ooh, reflect there. Might be hard with the reflect. Okay, he, he oh, got a fire off. Fires? Got, uh, oh, that's very he difficult it. to do. It is deceptively hard to do that. Uh, yeah, there, it's, there's no good animation for it, really. Now, Rose is going to uh, use Final Form, and since that has a higher level of glide, that'll make this much easier, and she can just revert and aerial dodge out. It's very simple. Yeah, so, that's once again, She's good. that Final Form forcing is paying off for Rose. Yeah, that's definitely been the biggest um, play that I think we've seen uh, any of the runners make in terms of just taking that chance, and it's definitely paying off. Um, uh, right now, since she's just going through the rest of core, we probably have time for a couple of donations. Perfect. I have a great pun donation. $50 from Oscar Meyer Briggs saying, These runners may seem a little goofy, but they rock us with their skills. They always rise the zig bar in each race because they know the Mickey to a good run because they can stitch those checks together. My personal favorite is Wreck-It Ralph. Thank you, Oscar, I appreciate that. I also have a $10 donation from Ina Alethea saying, Disney movie donation train, you say? I have to donate for the Black Cauldron then. And what better movie to go along with the Resident Evil incentive? Let's get that bonus spooks. And also, let's see that bear yeet it. Thank you, Ina, I appreciate that. And on that note of Resident Evil, we have almost $110,000 towards that out of the 170,000 needed. Just a reminder, we do need to meet that incentive by the end of that run. So chat, I am challenging you to work as a team and co-op together to beat the runners here in meeting that incentive. Let's see if you can reach the incentive by the end of this race before any of our runners finish their races. Right. Um, and on that tune, I also have $20 from Nomadic saying, four tickets to the $5 donation train, please. While we're on the topic of songs, there you see her. Of course you can, she's 10 feet tall. She wants you dead despite it all. And you don't know why and you're likely to die, but you're in Demetrix's world. Thank you, Nomadic. I appreciate that donation. Thank you, thank you, everyone. So when are we getting that uh, um, Kingdom Hearts Resident Evil crossover, huh? <laughs> When's that when, Resident Evil world gonna come out with Demetrix in it? <laughs> yeah. When, when Disney buys out, uh, buys out uh, Konami, right? Is it Konami? I, do, I don't know. I, I'm sorry, I chat. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, so just to get a check in on where everybody's at, uh, Spike is at 17 out of 37 important checks found. Hobbs is at 16 out of 37. Uh, Violin is at 14 out of 37, and Rose is at 12 out of 37. Uh, the goal is that the runners need to find all 37 of these important checks, these forms, magic, summons, proofs, um, the important ability second chance once more, find all those checks, and then beat the final boss of the game. It's Capcom. That is, 
interesting to mention that we're an hour and a half in and no one has found a single proof. Yeah. The proofs in these settings don't really do a whole lot beyond unlocking the final Zemnis fight. Um, but I like the crown that it puts on Sora's head and it's sad to not see it there yet. Uh, so Rose found Genie in the restoration site. Ooh. But did not find anything in core. So that core skip was not really helpful for finding the important checks. Yeah, and for those of you more uh, associated with the any percent run, you're probably pretty, you know Genie pretty well, but here in the rando, we don't use Genie a whole lot, uh, mainly because the Genie magnet kind of strats that they use in the any percent run, uh, you can get around using that with with a couple of other of the uh, normal finishers that you get that are AOE related, uh, and I, I don't I don't know I like to see the genie strats used more often in Rando. I know Violin is a big fan of them, mm -hmm. um, so hopefully if he can get that genie a little bit earlier, we'll be able to see some more genie strats. They're really cool to watch, but they're just kind of difficult to do, which is why you don't see them as often. It's just it's just scary sometimes. Right. Yeah. But because you get the the checks in a different order, like you don't normally, like when you get genie, you kind of have like valor form and wisdom form already. So you have those forms of genie available to you, um, and you have a magnet, pretty like right around that same time. But you might not get the the checks in the same order. So it's definitely something that is not as used. In your um, yeah, and we're seeing the final form being used against Demix in a way you would not be able to use it in the vanilla run. Demix just melts from fire damage. That final form means he is stuck there. The the final fire strat doesn't increase the revenge value, the RV of, of the enemies as well. So you, if you can get an enemy stuck in final fire, they're not going anywhere. They're going to stick there until they're gone. Hmm. Or until you run out of final form. Something else that is added to the rando is an extra little like reprieve after Demix, where you can go into wisdom form before doing the Final Fantasy fights here. So Rose is gonna use wisdom form here to uh, do all these heartless fights on the way to 1,000 heartless. Yeah, that's just one more way Rose has been flexing her her rando knowledge and really really utilizing the small things that um, allows you to uh, do stuff you normally wouldn't in the, in the ending of Siren. And meanwhile, we have uh, Hobbs fighting the mysterious man in LOD2. The, and Spike is doing Scar in Pride Lands, and Violin is doing Zigbar in The World That Never Was. It looks like we may have missed being able to talk about it for Violin, but we'll probably see it again. Violin got uh, Zigbar into a loop where Zigbar's just stuck shooting at you infinitely, essentially. Um, hopefully we'll be able to see it on the other uh, runners and discuss it in more detail. But it's a really interesting um, uh, tactic that sort of breaks his, his AI from being able to go into a DM at that point. Yes, uh, Spike is using the Wildcat limit of Simba's to try to get through this uh, Scar fight. Um, all right, he's through. Yeah, he actually, did he get, did, was there no DM there? Spike is popping off. He's so happy about that. <laughs> if he didn't he get the DM, I would be, I'd be so happy for that too. <laughs> oh my God. Scar is one of the worst fights in this game in terms of like the difficulty. He'll grab you, he'll do combos that like immediately bring you to one and then he'll hit you with a fire or a thunder that you just couldn't respond to. And the fight is long if you get into those DMs. His anger is going to grow and you're gonna get stuck. <laughs> Uh, Violin is fighting Luxord for the first time that we've seen this seed. And we're going to see what is in Throne Room for Hobbs. And Rose found a reflect in the Crystal Fissure right before 1000 Heartless. So there's just lots going on, chat. Yeah, now it's all coming together. We're going to be seeing, there should be a lot of good checks in Throne Room normally, but there's, there's explosion. explosion. Aerial sweep's good. Glide is going to be moving like the wind. A reflect, Another reflect. And that's it. Wow. So no Storm Rider, no Data Zigbar today. Yeah, damn, I wanted Data Zigbar. He's he's great. Kind of scary. Um, but let's see, the Luxord fight for, for Violin, um, it's really going to be about reflecting uh, that 
purple move and then trying to stay away from the spinning uh, cards that Luxor is going to summon. I don't know if he's using 60 or 30 FPS. There's a bit of a weird physics thing going on when the game is running at 60 that causes a couple of uh, mechanics in the game to act differently than they normally would. Luxord's cards in particular are really mean at 60 FPS. They'll just go in random directions sometimes and they won't follow you. Um, so it can make that fight just a little bit more hectic because look at them spinning around like wildly. You have to just stay away and, and, and slow down the fight a little bit if you want to be safe. And it looks like Pride Lands is still still going. Uh, Spike is just trying to stay away from Shadow Scar. Yeah, so the most horrifying addition. So the next boss in Pride Lands is Ground Shaker. Uh, you definitely don't see that in the end percent run because uh, you don't actually have to do Pride Lands at all. Uh, but Ground Shaker can be a bit annoying if you don't have the right tools. But Spike has uh, Berserk Charge, which is the big one, and he has a really high strength. Stat. Um, Violin found second chance on Luxord as well, so now Violin should be able to survive most hits at least once. Yeah, that's actually really big because now Rose is going into Luxord to get the second chance. Having second chance in once more is essentially just saying, I have a free life now that my opponents don't. And every free life that they use is time saved over an opponent being dead. And, and that, that could save you literal minutes, especially as we get to these larger bosses and the datas especially. Right. So I, I want to call in attention to Spike's uh, ground shaker fight here really quick. So he's doing these reaction commands to like break ground shaker. He's going to go into Berserk Charge by using Cure to drain his MP, and he's just going to spam the square button. And Give it a go. That HP is just down to one now, but you can't kill ground shaker until like, the, the totem at the on the back comes out. So he's going to wait until the uh, the boss reforms. He's going to get onto the back of Ground Shaker. And then after the, the boss kind of does its thing, he's going to go into Simba's Limit, and he's just going to kill it in one shot and finds a cure for his trouble. Oh, that entire world for a cure. Oh my god, that's random for you. Yep. They really, no one's used Cure much yet, ex except for getting into Berserk Charge. It's really the only use for it in the rando, at least for the higher-end runners. They just don't need to heal, you know? Right, exactly. All right, And so you can my... heal through a lot of other ways as well, so... Oh, yeah, it definitely. Dry forms heal you. Mm -hmm. um, so Violin You're is going to be going up the world that never was now. Um, these four checks before Xemnas 1 and then Xemnas 1 are the only things left before a, a possible data Xemnas. Data Xemnas is probably the scariest data to see in a rando run since it's two bosses instead of one. And if you lose to the second boss, you gotta fight the first one again. Mm -hmm. Okay, Master Form was after Psyx. So now all the forms have been found except for Final Form. And this world's not done yet. Oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah, Violin is definitely, I imagine, thinking, please, for the love of God, do not be Data Xemnas. Not today. Mm -hmm. Even even um, long-term runners have, have problems with Data Xemnas. It just feels like sometimes he's going to be extra mean, and there's not much you can do, and anything he does is going to put you in the danger zone. Right, yeah. So... Before Data Zenness, though, the story version of Zenness here, you have to do this reaction command where Sora runs up a building somehow um, to uh, <laughs> hit Zenness down. Um, and then I expect that Violin is just going to do some reflex and maybe some uh, some basic combos just to drain all the, uh, the health from Zenness 1 here. Oh, okay, he's getting a lightsaber dance instead. So majestic. Yeah. Um, Hobbs is doing 1K. He's trying to grab these robots and do the laser spin attack. You've seen this in the Andy Percent before. Um, but this can be very hard to survive without a second chance and once more. Luckily, he has once more at least. So he should be fine, especially with the uh, amount of leveling that they've done. Um, 
We'll check in on Violin after that Zenith fight is over, but we probably want to read some donations first. Perfect. I've got $150 from Ziggity Zack saying, my friends and I made plans to watch the Resident Evil Village run later, and it would be a shame if the incentive weren't met. So here's some money to ensure we can have the run later. Also, for what my favorite Disney movie, due to the recent acquisitions of 20th Century Fox, my favorite Disney movie is Ridley Scott's Alien. Oh my god, it's true. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I also have $10 from Peace Love Frog saying, just wanted to do my part to see this RE8 run. I fell in love with this game and I can't wait to see it done fast. Come on everyone, let's get a donation train going. Let's go. Thank you, Frogs. I appreciate that donation. Thank you, thank you so much. I also have $25 from Dewdroppy saying, let's get that Resident Evil Village incentive. That's what Bulbasaur would have wanted. Thank you, Dew, I appreciate that. And just an update on that incentive. We are at a little over $115,000 towards that incentive out of 170. Come on, chat, I know you can do it. We can beat the racers in reading that incentive before they're done with their run so that we can see Resident Evil Village get those donations in. And give me your favorite Disney movie, puns, maybe songs. Happy to do them all. All right. Now, so. I know we all want to see the bear yeeted, but we've only gotten one page in an hour 45 of the data's holding on to our Pooh Bear? Well, so we found, we've actually found three among all four racers. So there was one on Zendus 1, which means uh, we now know that Data Zendus is not required to finish the scene. Oh. Uh, there was one after 1,000 Heartless for Hobbs. Oh, wow. And then the, the one that they found in STT. So they can get up to Kanga's house now. Hmm. And there's no guarantee that we have to go to the last page. Technically, they could find all the checks beforehand, but that wouldn't happen. You always got to go to the last page. That's just a rando rule, you know? You don't, it, it's never going to randomize earlier than that. Yeah, just to be clear, that is sarcasm. <laughs> we have it no guarantee. It feels like it's not. It, it, I always have to go to the last page. That's all I'm saying, okay? That's fair, that's fair. All right, so the mini games are sped up at least. So. Yeah, Hobbs and Violin are doing the same mini game right now, and it is sped up just because it can be a little slow. It's kind of hard though when it's sped up like this. Like if you're not ready for it, um, I know when I first did it, I was like, "What is going on? I can't keep up with this." Well, luckily you can just kind of grab Gopher and hold left, and that gets you through most of the these seconds. Yeah, that is that secret rando tech. I mean, it's not really rando specific, but I feel like I never saw anyone do it before rando, is all I'm saying. Well, it's not very often you have to see 100 Acre Wood in a KH2 run, so then you can. It has to be like an All Worlds run or like a Jimmy Journal run. The any percent mm -hmm. doesn't go to 100 Acre Wood much at all. The rando really has been great to getting people to uh, to see new new or not see new content, but see different content than you normally would um, with like you know Kingdom Hearts related speed runs. And I do really enjoy the way that uh, you can approach fights in different ways. You never always have the same abilities. You never always have the same tools or levels. And um, when watching different speedrunners play through the game, we've already seen it in this run a bunch. All four of them are approaching these fights differently. Spike is using Wisdom Fire, which is similar to Final Fire on Demix here, um, but doesn't have the same longevity of like the loop. We had seen Final Form on Demix. We had seen just the normal Demix fight, now he's using Limit. Like there's just so many ways that you can approach this game and the way it's been designed allows for a fairly free form like gameplay style, just dependent on the person and, and what they're used to. It really is just, it's incredibly exciting. Yeah. So just as an update, uh, Rose and Violin are both leveling Master Form right now. Um, they're trying to figure out what this last check on drives is and it is, the ukulele charm on master level seven. So Stitch is now available for Rosen Violin, but that is, you need all five forms available in order to actually get that check. 
Yeah, and then you have to get to seven on Master Form, which the runners are going to have to choose. Spike and, and Hobbs are going to have to decide which forms they want to level first. And they haven't even touched Master Form at all yet. So that could be a big time save for Rose and Violin. Now that they know, Violin and Rose, they're done, right? Right, like, Rose is going to level Wisdom Form up because there might be a super boss later that Wisdom Form is very good at day to day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it's not the worst thing to keep leveling, but now they don't have to go out of their way to do it. Yeah, that could be big. That's one of those major points in the run where if you're having to level up every form except for Master, you're spending like 10 minutes at least. Um, so that could be big. Right. Now, uh, both Hobbs and Spike have not forced Final Form to be able to level it yet. So mm -hmm. they are missing Master and Final. Uh, so they are probably going to just, at this point, find Final Form and find Master Form. We know Master Form is in the world that never was, but they have not done that yet. We don't yeah, know where Final Form is. The, the number of checks that these runners have, uh, Violin and Rose did the world that never was, and that's a lot of time investment. Um, compared to what Spike and J-Ops are doing. So these numbers, um, compared between the two teams, Rose and Violin may have actually gotten slightly ahead with the, I, with the content they're doing. I agree. Now, uh, Violin just did a skip that is rando exclusive. Um, it, I'll try to describe what happened uh, after the fact, but what Violin was doing was gaining a lot of height using his forms, Final Form and Master Form. And then it just skips a load zone in front of Sean Yu. And you can just get into throne room and get these eight chests without doing the fight. And 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 um, we saw J Hobbs actually do all of uh, LOD two. We saw Land Dragons two mm -hmm. being done by him. So that's a big time save for Violin and Rose. Right, exactly. Yeah, really so, this is anyone's race right now. I have no idea. Like this could go either direction. Exactly. Uh, Hobbs did find the Proof of Connection in Ruined Chamber, though. So that is a big time commitment in Agrabah to get that one important check. Oh, no Genie Jafar, though? No Genie Jafar. No Lexaeus, the super boss, Darn. after Genie Jafar. It's one less super boss. Yeah. Can we be friends? It's unfortunate. We need more but... super bosses so we can hit that incentive. For Resident Evil, chat. I'm looking at you. I'm watching. Speaking of that, just an update. We do have a, a little over 118,000 towards that. Again, we need 170 by the end of this run. Uh, sounds like we're we're starting to get nearer to that, uh, based on the checks we found here. So, running out of time, chat. Make sure we get those donations in here. I know we can do it, chat. Come on, guys. Right. Uh, Alios, uh, Spike is doing data axle right now. Spike, hello? Can, I saw can the fire and I was, I was confused. Go for it. You want me no. to do it? Yeah, please. Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, okay, this is a bit early for Data Axel. He's definitely below the floor. There's a damage floor based off of your, your stats. So he's doing essentially the damage he would be doing if he was at level one. Um, what he's going to be trying to do here, most likely, is a uh, reflect blizzard loop. Blizzard does a ton of damage to Axel because he's, you know, fire dude, right? He, the, the ice damage is just extra, the elemental. Um, now, if he can get him in the loop, what he's going to do is reflect Axel's first attack, then use two or three blizzards to get that blizzard damage in. Then Axel is going to continue just retaliating. You reflect it, you do blizzard. Now, he only has... Reflera. He does not have Reflega, which means that it's a little more likely that Axel isn't going to get the full, um, like, knockback from the Reflect because it's just not big enough to always hit him, which is why we've seen, you know, this first death or two. I think Spike's going to be able to get it now. You know, <laughs> he'll be able to get it soon. It's a little early for it, um, but he could, if there's a form, if like Final Form is on this, I could see why he'd be doing it. If there's a magnet on it, it could be big as well. Um, and he definitely has the tools to do it. It's just below the floor, he can't make any mistakes. Exactly, yeah. So 
he's probably going to give this a few attempts, and if he can get it, the loop going and be consistent at it, this might be very big for Spike and Hobbs. Yeah, that reflect is just not going off for him right now. He's getting it just barely. It's it's not um, getting that knockback in time. It's it's finishing too early, and so Axel still has invincibility. Right, exactly. So while Spike, it looks like Spike is gonna try again at another time. Um, we so we're seeing some overlap now. Violin is doing Scar, Hobbs is doing Ground Shaker, and um, Rose is doing Timeless River, which Spike has already done and gotten a Blizzard. Um, it, Disney Castle is not done yet, so Marluxia and or Lingering Will or Terra are on the table. Um, yeah, Terra is available, isn't he? Oh man. Mm -hmm. While this overlap is happening, we could probably get some more donations. Awesome. I've started getting some poem ones in, in addition to the songs I've gotten earlier. So I have $15 from Six Pog saying, there once was a man named Ethan who knew how to take such a beaten. His limbs have been severed. He's been repeatedly dismembered. How is this man still breathing? Donate to Resident Evil Village. Only a couple hours left. We can do this. You six pog, I appreciate that donation. Uh, speaking of which, we have $121,000, a little over that, for that incentive out of 170 needed to unlock that game. Keep those donations rolling in, chat. You definitely want to see this. We want to extend the marathon, more speed runs. Let's get them in. I also have $50 from Big Love saying, who would use a shield in combat? That would be goofy. What? Oh God. <laughs> Nobody liked that pun? <laughs> Don't be so heartless. Thanks to the runners oh. and crew for another great AGDQ. Wow. <laughs> All right. So Spike has decided to go into Grim Reaper 2, the second visit boss of Port Royal. Um, this is going to look very much like the any percent run where you're going to see some thunders on uh, the invincible Grim Reaper to get the medallions from him. Um, the difference here is that Spike does not have Master Form, which you would normally have in the 80% run. So we'll have to see how Spike handles the, uh, the last phase of this fight, where you have to get all 882 medallions back from Grim Reaper 2. I expect that he'll probably use Final Form instead of Master Form, but we'll have to see what he does. Listen, we need one donation per medallion picked up, okay, chat? I know you can do it. I want to see it. There's only 882. I know we've had a number of people say they donate for super bosses, too. Um, mm -hmm. wonder if we have a count on that, how many we've seen among all four players. Right. Uh, I, I'm going to be donating $25 per super boss that is defeated in this seed, and I'm trying to keep tra track right now. So Data Roxas, Zexion, Data Axel are confirmed. Marluxia and or Terra are confirmed. So we have three guaranteed, or uh, four guaranteed, possibly five. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if anyone wants to join in on uh, donating towards super bosses there, that will also help us get Resident Evil Village. All right, so Spike is finishing up the last phase of GRG. Violin is doing a very similar thing here. Um, just trying to get all those medallions back. Yeah, we right. gotta remember that Spike doesn't have second chance and no Master mm -hmm. Form. That was actually very clean, given those tools. Yeah. That's normally, that's a very scary fight without Master Form normally. Right. Oh. All right, and Data Luxor is now confirmed as well. That is five, possibly oh, six guaranteed. Oh my God. Oh, Circle of Life had Light and Darkness on Grim Reaper. What? Oh, that's so rude. That is the easy way to force out Final Form chat. And it is ridiculous how late that was found. Yeah, it's good. we're going to see if it pays off or not that they waited. I feel like Rose has really gained a lot from having Final Form for the last hour now. Yeah, it's definitely been an hour. Yeah, that's big. That's really big. Obviously, here Spike is immediately just like, I, I got to get my final form. We got to level up these forms. It's just too important to leave at this point. Yeah, so just for clarity, chat, Hobbs and Spike have leveled their drive forms as high as they can go right now without final form. 
So now, now that Spike has forced out Final Form, he can get all his forms to level 6. Now, unfortunately, we as outside observers know that that's not going to be enough. They're going to need to mm. find Master Form in the world that never was in order to get Master level 7. I feel like Spike would want to go there now. Like, this is the I, time, right? Yeah, I would expect that, but maybe he's going to go... Data Luxord? Oh, wow. Spike is on the warpath. Yeah, Spike is just going after these data. He wants them dead. I respect the decision. If he can get At, that, it's a guaranteed check. Violin is doing the same thing. If they if they sync up right now, at this time in the run, this is the last thing I would have expected. <laughs> yeah, Rose is going through LOD to follow up on what Violin did. Hobbs is going through Port Royal to just make sure that that is like ready to go so he can do Data Luxor later. Mm -hmm. Maybe he's going to just do it now too. Who knows? <laughs> it looks like they're both doing it right now. Oh my God. Now, there is a couple of different ways you can fight Data Luxord. Normally, it's recommended you just like play his mini game and then you can loop him by never using a finisher after playing the first mini game. You just do aerial spirals, you don't use a finisher, and he'll just let you wail on him. I think that might be the route they'd want to take here, given that they're both below the damage floor. But oh, nope. Spike says, no, I'm using a finisher immediately, and now we get to see where this leads. Violin, on the other hand, is no he's finisher too they're just gonna go for it that is okay Th this is the faster way to just do the mini games over and over mm -hmm. it drains luxor's time gauge really quickly but it is also mm -hmm. risky like what just happened to violin there he's gonna be a, a die a die for a while and he's gonna have to wait this form gauge out and try not mm -hmm. to die and spike still doesn't have the second chance if he gets hit by a single card he will die mm -hmm. Uh, that is that is really scary. Neither Hobbs or Spike know where second chance is. They have not beaten Zigbar. Yeah, that's definitely. Oh no. Um, Hobbs has beaten Zigbar. He has not beaten Luxor, which is where yeah. second chance is. Which ironically, what's gonna happen here is Spike is gonna get vanilla Luxor's second chance. Oh right my now. god. He is. Will they now, realize? That's a pretty rare ex ex um like happening here. Yeah, hopefully they figure that out on their trackers. I, I expect that they will. Yeah, a, a a data has the 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 pop up item that the normal boss would have if you haven't fought the normal boss yet. So Spike is going to get the normal Luxord pop up without having fought Luxor, that could be very confusing if, if I, I, they should know this, but that would confuse hey, me. I, I've Spike never got it. That. Spike got it. Wow, he is popping up. He, that was a great fight. Okay, That was so, wonderful. Good to know the auto tracker correctly put it in the right world. So we're all good. Oh, wow. It was the proof of peace on data Luxor. Wow. Wow. What a, this is a, a, a crazy scene. And Violin is doing just as good. He's about to finish oh, yeah. this one off too. Commentator's curse, I hope he, he'll be fine. Yeah, please, please, but, please, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that is super exciting. You you don't see that. Oh yeah. I don't think I've ever seen someone do Luxor before, the, the normal Luxor before. That's, that's, that's fine. Now, so funny enough, Hobbs is going back into the world that never was to beat Luxor right now to get second chance. Yeah, and that's just, you can see their level of knowledge of like even the more behind the scenes uh, stuff in terms of how this randomizer works. They've been spending, I mean, all four of these runners have been spending a ton of time grinding seeds, learning the rando, practicing every combination of abilities and bosses as they can. And you can see it, you can see now just how much it's been paying off. These, all these fights have been wonderful. And the, and the race is incredibly close. And Violin got through the last mini game of Data Luxord as well. Easy. And now uh, we're gonna get. Oh my god! <laughs> Spike is doing Zexion, just spamming fire in final form. Mm -hmm. but Zexion uh, and final fire are are two peas in a pod. I would never want them separated. Yep, there it is. There's Zexion dead. Yeah, you can tell Spike's feeling really good about this run right now, and I, oh, yeah. I, I, I'm on the same page. He's definitely showing how much this practice has been paying off. Right, exactly. 
And it had a torn page. Wow. Oof. See, so toward the end of this run, chat, it's just going to be boss after boss after boss. Mm -hmm. And it's just going to be really intense. And then we're going to have little breaks into 100 Acre Wood where we do these mini games. It's, this is great. This is what we're going to do. With, uh, with J-Hobs finishing the Luxord fight right now, um, we probably have time for a few donations. I have $25 from Oxert saying, my two loves in life, Kingdom Hearts and Resident Evil. Now is the perfect time to get my donation in to show my support for these amazing Kingdom Hearts runners and help unlock that bonus RE8 playthrough. Let's go! I also have another song for y'all. Uh, $50 from Stephasaurus saying, Hails as old as time, true as it can be. I go into her home for a little roam, but I should just flee. Instead, I must stay. How can this be? She's a tall lady who's a little bit shady. Demotrisk and me. Thank you, Stephasaurus. And just a reminder, we do have to still meet that incentive for Resident Evil Village. We are a little over $128,000 towards that incentive out of 170 needed by the end of this run. So keep those donations coming in. We definitely want to see that run. And I want to see Lady Demetrix. I don't know about y'all, but I really want to see... I want to see her tonight. So please, please get those donations in. Yeah, I am in agreement. Come on, chat. We can't miss out on this one. And you're almost there. Yeah, there's only about 45 minutes to an hour left. That's more than enough time. They've got this. Oh, yeah. That, that sounds like a challenge, chat. Yeah. I think we can I think we can beat the runners, but we, we have to work together and run our own little co-op here. Mm-hmm. All right. Is there so, a possibility of a sixth super boss at this point, or are we at five? Is, is it just on five is what we know? It could be Marluxia and Terra. Like it, it will. I want to see Terra so bad. You, you guys have seen one Terra in some of the uh, super boss challenges here on NGDQ, but have you ever seen four Terras? That's all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> we also don't know if Data Demix. Or separate from another. Oh yeah. I mean, they're, 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 I would love to see like six or seven like super bosses and all the different ways that they could approach them. I mean, we got, we got Spike on Marluxia now. He's just going. He's just going to go through them. Oh yeah. Now that he's got that second chance, he is he is feeling confident. So Rose is trying to get some extra levels in, knowing that Data Luxord is on the table, Data Roxas is on the table. They confirmed at this point that data Axel is required. So mm -hmm. Rose is taking this time to just try to get those stats above that damage floor to try to do some extra damage and get through those fights as quick as possible. Mm -hmm. I'd like to point over at Spike's uh, screen real quick and just look at how he is getting uh, essentially Marluxia stuck in a loop. By using fire as he teleports into the center of the room, he's hitting him before he can start the big uh, thorn circle animation, and then you have to wait for him to come to you. It's like five or ten seconds of him just like preparing for an attack. By getting in the center early and using that fire, he can't get the move out fast enough, and he just immediately goes into another combo. It's a great time saver, and it reduces the chance of him getting hit by that thorn move, which just puts Sora at one and is a very dangerous place to be stuck in. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, because uh, his final form is not leveled up a lot, he wasn't able to maintain that final form combo toward the end there. So he has to just do these combos on Marluxia, and uh, he's probably going to have to take another uh, desperation attack toward the end here. Yeah, where he's going to... Yeah, at least one or two. He might have to do a second one. Ooh, this is scary. Okay. Let's go okay into good good use of that horn there. Mm -hmm. there it is. Oh! Yep. Okay, how does he approach this? He's gonna use those wisdom fires. Will it be enough, though? He's gonna run out of 
enough mana? Will the DM hit? Mm, barely too short. Yeah, it, at this point in the fight, just surviving is better than dying. So exactly. that is his goal right now. He's just trying to survive. Yeah, and below the damage floor, it's really, really hard to get these bosses down in the most, like, quote, there it is. optimal route. You're just having to slowly whittle them down. Is it going to be Terra? That's the big question. Oh, yeah, Marluxia. Was Marluxia required? Marluxia was oh, required, and Terra and is required. Terra is still a thing. The tracker isn't done yet. They have to fight both. Oh, so my. we are going to see four lingering wills by the end of this sea chat. It's so going is that, to be crazy. That's six? That is Two six bosses? super bosses, yes. I better see donations for that. That's six you guys get to watch four times each. Come on, that's big. Oh my god. Okay, so now we've got... Um, if we look at everyone's trackers and merge everything together, the, there's still something in Hall of Bastion. Then we got like a bunch of data fights and super bosses. Yep. And then and then 100 Acre Woods. We can yeet that bear, I hope. But those pages are going to be on bosses. Yep, they sure are. Yeet the bear might be one of the last things they do. Oh my. Ooh. <laughs> Halloween Town sacrificed itself for this. And you know what? That's fair. Yeah. Halloween Town is where <laughs> Spike and Hobbs and Rose force final. I'm pretty sure Violin did as well. But... Yeah, that's it's one of the best places to do it. It has the shortest amount of time between entering the room and getting the enemies to All spawn. Right. All right, Alios. Spike is going to beat Roxas right now. Explain this fight. Spike, you are on another level, dude. You can level up no, a bit. Rose? No, this, this is vanilla. Like, oh, normal one. Okay. <laughs> I can't keep track a little bit. Like, they're getting ahead of me. <laughs> Oh my god, did Rose get um what she needed? Yeah, she looks like her stats are okay. Yeah, she Oh my god. He has Blazaga, so get Axel there. He is doing the normal Roxas fight. He's gonna steal the Keyblades for more damage. I can't imagine he's gonna go for a quick run strat. No, he's gonna probably go into final form already, yes. Or not final. Or form. limit. limit. Yeah. Then he's gonna use an R's. It'll be make him invincible. He pulls him out of it. Look how much damage those are, those Keyblades are doing. It's absurd, and he's gone. Yeah, see, that is why Spike left that Roxas fight for now, because he can mm -hmm. go so much faster than quicker. That's a minute and a half save minimum. Mm -hmm. You know, it's oh, it's a three-hour run. It's only a minute and a half. That's a minute and a half plus everything else. Who knows? Like, it, it's it really does start to add up over time. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. <laughs> Rose is currently on Data Axel. Let's see if she does the same strat as Spike did. Looks like she's going to be going for the DM loop instead. You want to talk about this one? Yeah, so the idea here is you're going to try to force Axel to like go over his revenge value, and that'll make him go into the firewall and try to like slam you uh, into the fire floor. But there's, an art, there's a reaction command there that if you're in the middle of the arena, you can use that reaction command to like knock them back into the air. And you can just repeat this loop of a full combo with explosion, and then a blizzard to push him into the wall, and then reaction command. And you can just do this over and over and over until his HP is low. Yeah, and if you haven't noticed the uh, chat, Sora is at one HP. If she gets hit once, he, she, she will die. The way that the, the fire floor works is it keeps you there at one. So if she makes a mistake here, and this is a fairly long process, she'd have to restart. But it looks like she's doing pretty good at keeping this up. Yeah, we just have to hope that she can maintain her uh, MP level and just maintain this combo. Yeah, and it is technically slower than the Blizzard strat. Mm -hmm. But if she isn't dying, she's saving a lot of time on the one or two attempts you're probably going to have to make for Blizzard Strat. Correct, yes. It looks like um, Hobbs is going to get some levels and level up Final Form at the same time since he has picked up the Master Form as well from finishing the world whenever it was. So we're going to see if Hobbs ends up leveling Master before going on to the other forms. So Rose is trying to survive with limit form here. Okay. Trying to, uh... Oh, okay, come on. 
Okay, so limit form will heal itself with every hit during the limit, so at least she's getting a, a backup there, but it looks like she's okay. Okay, so she's, she's got the loot back, it looks like. Yes, okay. So now, in order to beat Data Axel, you have to get rid of the Firefall by completing that reaction command. So now that Axel's HP is at one, she can continue the reaction command, do the entire thing, get rid mm -hmm. of the Fire Four, and now just send a blizzard like into the face, and now Data Axel is dead. Yeah, good fight. She's very happy about that, I imagine. Getting that on uh, in, in one full attempt there is a lot better than having to restart it halfway through. So Data Axel had a torn page. I saw they're holding all the paper, man. All right. Um, it looks like everybody is just going through 100 Acre Wood and leveling drive form, so this is probably a very good time for some donations. Mm -hmm. All right, I've got $50 from Jastronaut saying, Long time GDQ watcher here. I recently proposed to my wonderful fiance, so this is the first time we have been able to share D GDQ together as an engaged couple. Since I am on the subject of married life, my favorite Disney movie is Up. I know we can meet this Resident Evil village inside of Twitch chat. Let's let us all watch more great games and help fight cancer. I also have a thousand and one dollars from Nega Hyphen saying, "Here's to Resident Evil Village incentive and cheering on people playing the parts I screamed at playing alone." I also have a hundred twenty-eight dollars from Andy Rue saying, "Guess I'll just guess I'll just say fingers crossed for Cars World and KH4." Come on, chat. Let's get across the finish line. Ka-chow. Oh Would they have to turn into cars to to meld in and with the world? Because they can't mess with the world order. Would they have they, to be a car, they have, Sora? They have to. Some oh, of, no. What? I wonder what type of uh, vehicle. Though well, there's like different vehicles in that game. So maybe uh, Donald Duck would be a little scooter. I don't know. <laughs> like a, like, a, like a moped. Donald Duck's a moped. And like Goofy <laughs> is like a... What would Goofy even be? Oh, like a beetle? Goofy would have to be like a Mater style truck, I think. Yeah. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and then oh, Sora, have... Sora would have to be a Corvette style because Sora's oh, got a character. Of course, of mm. course. He'd, well, he'd be a race car. Mm. He'd be like, yeah. <laughs> I am curious, chat, what, what uh, kind of Kingdom Hearts worlds would you want to see in future uh, Kingdom Hearts games over on that subject? Uh, I also want to just mention real quick here that uh, we do have $135,000 towards that Resident Evil Village incentive out of $170,000. Mm -hmm. uh, we do need to meet that by the end of the run, though, chat. So keep those donations rolling in. Y'all are doing a great job. Um, I know we can beat the runners in meeting this uh, goal here. So, But we need your help, so let's all work together in a co-op to mm -hmm. unlock the game. Co-op donations. Yep. All right, oh. so just as an update, so Violin did the uh, Mushroom 13 check, which is unlocked with the Proof of Peace, and got mm -hmm. Chicken Little as a summon, and mm -hmm. Hollow Bastion is done. So Data Demix is now known to be not required. Ah, oh, no Sefi. That's rough. Right. But that also means that our super boss count is known. We have to do six super bosses for the seed. Good lord. Uh, it is Data Roxas, Data Axel, Data Luxor, Marluxia, Zexion, Lingering Will. That is wonderful. I'm glad that we get to show off all these different bosses today. Um, we're going to see so many different strats for them. It's really the spice of, of, of Kingdom Hearts 2, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Knowing that you have to do these bosses in order to collect all these important checks to, to finish the seed, it just it adds that cherry on top of a very awesome random seed. It puts a lot of pressure on the runners, though, too, because now they know that, like, this is not going to be the easiest job in the world. They're going to have to work for those last checks. Mm -hmm, exactly. But if you donate and cheer them on, I'm sure they'll get you energy. And we also don't know if the bear needs to be yeeted yet. I forgot about that. We gotta... They, they have to eat the bear. They just... I, I believe that the bear must be yeeted today, okay? It, 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 is, it is something that we as a community must create. Yeah, exactly. And there's still nothing there as they go to Kanga's? That is correct. Up to Kanga's house, we have not found anything. Okay, good. It's one step closer. So... 
just to check in on everybody. Uh, Violin is at 26 out of 37 and is doing Data Axel right now, doing the same strat that Rose did with the Explosion and the Blizzard. Uh, Spike is at 24 out of 37, or 25 out of 37, sorry, and is uh, getting through the world the number was, just finishing that off. Uh, he's going to be following up on a lot of what Hobbs has already done. Like, Hobbs and Spike don't have a lot of overlap. They need to kind of do some similar things. Hobbs is at uh, 28 out of 37. Now with that, or once... Or 28 out of 37, 29 once the next scene is done. And then Rose is at 23 out of 37, but we'll be going to Spooky Cave now and then just following up on a lot of things that Violin has been doing behind the scenes. Uh, so, yeah. That no Ro Rose's number goes skyrocket immediately. Uh, There's the combo, other negative combo. Negative combo in uh, Spooky Cave for Rose is very big. Mm. And a magnet and a guard break. Hello, Spooky Cave. Okay, Sunset Hill map. That's not really important. Mm. Is going in Sometimes you gotta know where you're going. Slap shot wow. too. All right. Okay. I mean, Spooky Cave's juicing. It's going. All right. There's two pop-ups on Poo here after you get the party through the cave, and if. 100 Acre Wood is not done there. They're going to have to go to Starry Hill. And then it's a 50-50 shot of if uh, eating the bear is required and throwing Pooh uh, on the top of the hill there. If 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 it's not required, they still got to do it, though. It's it's, it's part of the spirit of, of the hill. Yeah, I, I will be disappointed if nobody <clears throat> eats the bear if it's not required. I think they know what they have to do. Oh, yeah. If they, they'll, they'll be on the same page. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh, 100%. Um, we have another Data Axle fight happening on our violin side now. It looks like he's doing the same strat as uh, Rose decided with just doing the uh, the RC here. Um, he is also below the floor as well. So all of these runners have been fighting these Data Bosses as if they're at level one, which I got to give them a lot of props for that. That is not easy. And it... In some cases, you may find it a little faster to go and level up first, but would that really be in the spirit of the GDQ room? To not show them at the yeah. most difficult level possible? No, it, you gotta do it this way. Uh, it looks like Rose is gonna do uh, Data Roxas. Yeah. Oh, she is. I wonder, oh, double I, negative combo perhaps? Yeah. That's my guess too. Yep. Mm -hmm. Would you like to describe how that one works when she gets in there? I, it's pretty straightforward, but I think there's some people who may not have seen it yet. Right. So you may have uh, you may have seen the double negative combo strat for uh, Lingering Will or Terra. Um, the idea here is that Roxas is susceptible to the same the same trick, where you just do you put both negative combos on, so you go straight to your finishers and. You just do aerial finishers over and over and over. And Roxas has this lag animation where like he gets hit and he like lands on the ground and he's like recoiled. And as long as you continue to hit Roxas over and over, you can uh, just do that until he's dead. And she gets right into it. That was really clean. And now she just yes, beats do this over until Roxas is dead. And there's a lot of HP there, so she has to keep yeah. this up the entire time. Yeah, now if she misses one, there is a little bit of time available to get back into it. But if Roxas retaliates, it'll be very hard to get back into this loop. Right. So Yeah, she has to be on her A game for it, that's for sure. Right, so hopefully it stays this way the entire time. We're going to not talk about it not give any cursing at all. Violin is going to Spooky Cave. Uh, Spike is doing LOD stuff to get the Reflect in the throne room. And um, Hobbs is doing Data Lux. So, I'm going to avoid jinxing anybody and just say, hey, Nukes, do you have any donations for us? <laughs> of course I do. I have an, another poem for you all. Uh, a haiku, actually. $20 from Anonymous saying, Kingdom Hearts is light. Lady D is very big. Five more syllables. Uh, reminder, uh, we, we're about 30 
a little less than 30,000 away from meeting that Resident Evil Village. Uh, we do need to raise that by the end of this run, so keep those donations uh, coming. I also have a $499 donation from Alpha, Alpha Shadow Ooh. saying, this KH run is hype, the craziest I've seen. These super bosses beaten down, you ain't ever had a run like me. I've taken all your checks and hidden them real deep. Gotta search real hard to finish now, you ain't ever had a run like me. Fantastic run from everyone here. Let's keep the hype going and get Resident Evil Village run. Thank you, Alpha. I appreciate that. Thank you, thank you so much. Keep those donations coming in. Keep keep sending in songs. I'm loving these so much, chat. Yeah, those are wonderful. Yes. So Rose beat Data Roxas and found Final Form. So that's where Final Form was hiding, chat. It was on Data Roxas. It was definitely the right decision to force it then. Even if it was the longer force, I think Rose had made the right play there for sure. Mm -hmm. Yep. Given that Light and Darkness was on Grim Reaper 2, yeah, 100%. Mm -hmm. She's doing double negative as well for Marluxia here. Yeah, so it's the same principle. So it's yeah. just going to be the same thing that we already saw. Um, I suspect that once uh, Rose is done with Marluxia, she's probably just going to go straight to Terra. Oh, no, she doesn't have to prove the connection yet. She can't do it yet. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, no proofs at all. Right. So, But this is the same strat that they're probably going to use for, um, for Terra. And yeah, we just saw I mean, Spike do the throne room skip as well. Yeah, we missed that one again, so... They jump yeah. real high and get over an invisible wall. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You can actually see Spike here um, doing a really good job at not opening up chests that are unnecessary. Mm -hmm. um, Spike and J-Hobs have a bit of a system in place um, where they have, like, the chests are numbered and they call out the number of the chest for each room and that's how they're keeping track. They've definitely worked really hard on like not overlapping on unnecessary stuff. I know Rose and Violin are doing something fairly similar as well and it just goes to show how much work they've put in to make sure that this run comes out the best it can. Right, exactly. So reminder that this is a co-op race. So Spike and Hobbs have been sharing that information since the beginning of the season. So you can leverage that information to save little bits of time over the course of the entire run. Mm -hmm. Just knowing that you could only open three out of those eight ch chests in one room saves a little bit of time. Yeah, GDQ, every second counts. Mm -hmm. All right, so now that Hobbs has found that proof of peace, he can go check the, uh, the Mushroom 13 to get that Chicken Little. Yeah, thankfully you don't have to fight. You don't have to do all 13 of the Mushroom mini games. As Zach had mentioned earlier, that would be rough. Yeah. <laughs> They're not incredibly easy. If you've ever watched them done or you've ever seen like a Jiminy Journal run or something, those mini games can be rude. Yeah. Ha! All right. It's so one more quality of life. Right. So let, let's go over information that both teams know right now. So the Violin Rose team knows that. Um, OC, oh, they don't know OC is done yet, or the, that OC requires Zexion yet. But they, and they don't know that Pride Lands is done on Ground Shaker. Or Agrabah, I guess. But they know every other world is done. Hobbs and Spike know that Data Axle is required, that Terra is required, that uh, Starry Hill is required and Data Rocks is required. Like, they have more information at this point about what is required of the seed, whereas mm. Rose and Violin don't know when Olympus Coliseum and Pride Lands are done. Mm. That seems like a very minor thing, but it is story content that they have not done yet, so they don't know how far they need to go. Yeah, and that fear, that like questioning of what do I have left to do can sometimes Having the knowledge helps you make better decisions instead of having to guess and perhaps making the wrong one. So Spike is going back into Data Axel, uh, probably a little bit better prepared than he was before with that Reflega. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Well, oh, he may so have Hob been... So Hobbs has not done any of Timeless Urban yet. 
So he has to do the, the mini escort from the beginning of the feed. Oh wow, he really didn't enter the TR yet, you're right. I mean, there wasn't really anything in TR up until... Yeah, there were um, a couple blizzards, or uh, the second blizzard. Yeah, yeah. He, he hasn't done um, data axle though, so he's probably here at the very minimum. He wants to get that blizzard, so he has it for the data axle. That'll speed up that fight a little bit. I'm gonna prepare him for the Marluxia and the Terra. Um, so this is definitely where he needs to be. Right. Um, so then, Ro Rose has done an Agrabah now, got that proof of connection mm -hmm. in Ruin Chamber. So now she can go back and fight uh, Terra if she so wished. I feel like she would want to leave it for the end. Oh, I mean, even though she could do it right now, they don't right, know that the finale. They don't know that the torn page isn't there, so they might need to do that first. Oh, there she, yeah, you're right. She's just gonna go straight for it. She's prepping to make sure the double negative combo is working. Yep. All right. So we have our first lingering will fight on stream chat in the bottom left on Rose's screen. So you have to get out of Ooh. the first part, which uh, Terra decided to lock her attacks. She can't use uh, attacks anymore. Yeah, she's locked to only magic right now. Yeah. There's two orbs on the field. Rose, I'm afraid. Oh boy, she's trying. To, I, I, I think this is the better the better route, Chat. Just start over, try again. Mm hmm. There, there's a couple of different ways in which the Terra fight can start that'll determine how much work you're having to like do to get the double negative combo strat started. If he just flies and 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 does like a lunging attack, you're much more likely to be able to get it moving than if he tries to punch you or he gets into his bike phase and he starts flying around on the bike and you're just like, oh my god, Terra, I can't keep up. So let's hope that Rose can get the, uh, okay, she's going to use Stitch for safety here. We'll try to get some HP orbs. Mm -hmm. There's the bike, the horrifying bike phase. Right, yeah. The good thing about Stitch is that Stitch can just stun Terra there to give Rose the time to set up the double negative combo here. Yeah. Get this loop going. All right, so. Once again, you just have to maintain this combo, and there's a lot less time in between these hits. So hopefully she can keep this up. Yeah, now if Terra hits a pillar or a wall or like anywhere on this map that might have a weird slight incline, it'll actually cause Terra to break out of this loop. So she needs to make sure that if Terra starts moving towards like a wall, that she finds a way to reroute the uh, like direction that he is taking. She can normally kind of control it by moving Sora to the left a little bit, but it looks like she's got a pretty good setup where she is right now. A lot of open space. Right. I, I think we need to take the same approach as before. Let's not try to, to jinx her. Let's read some donations and get that incentive. Mm -hmm. All right. I have a $30 donation from Anonymous saying $5 per super boss. This KH2 randomizer has been amazing. Longtime watcher, first time donator. My father was recently diagnosed with cancer and has begun his fight. Luckily, it was caught early, and hopefully, the treatment will be successful. Let's get some RE Village. And that's a great reminder that the Prevent Cancer Foundation, which all this is going towards, helps with uh, preventing the cancer to begin with. So it, it's a wonderful, wonderful cause. All your donations go towards that. And additionally, we can put them towards Resident Evil Village right now, which also is a really great, great cause because we get to see Lady Demetrix. Uh, and right now we've got $145,000 towards that incentive. We need 170 total, so keep those donations coming in chat. I know we can beat the runners and get that met before the end of this run so we can unlock that game. All right, Rose did it. There we go. What was he hiding is the real question. Yeah, what what did Terra have? It was a magnet. 
Are there, are there many places that the magnets can be used at this point? I think, uh... Nope, there are no mob fights left. Oh, no, Rose has not done Olympus Coliseum yet, so she can do Which all is... of those fights super fast now. Oh, Violin hasn't actually finished the second half of it either. She's going right out. She's like, I got my magnets. We can get these fights done quick. This is definitely the right decision from her. And we're going to see probably her and Violin's uh, important check count spike up here because they're it's five and three for the two of them. Yeah. It's really the only difference. Oh, yeah. this The end of this race is going to be super fast. And it's going to be almost impossible to keep track, but we'll give it a shot. <laughs> Yeah, and don't forget that they're going to have to fight Final Xemnas and all of his stuff after they finish getting all 37 checks still. So we're not done when they hit 37. They got a little bit more to go. That's it. It looks like we're seeing a Data Roxas on the violin side now as well. Correct, yeah. Yeah, the double negative combo strat works on, as we've seen, a lot of bosses in this game. Uh, only because you never really were supposed to have access to it for, I mean, like, much at all. Right, so, like, you would get one negative combo on a late level, and then you'd get the other negative combo on a Keyblade for beating mm -hmm. them. Which is, like... Well, they just are like, we're not going to test double negative combo. Who's ever going to use that? Here comes Rando going, we have it at the start now. And there's all the, all the bosses get stuck in that loop. Oh, Violin. Okay. But yeah, what is left for our runners now? We have... I think we've seen... Every, think, we've seen everything, everything but Starry Hill. We've seen everything yeah. but Starry Hill. Which means we get to eat that bear. I think once uh, J Hobbs finishes Data Axel, we can see that. Data Axel's the last one with the page for him. Um, there was a page in an OC for yeah. viol uh, Rose and Violin. So yeah, we are getting very close. Uh, to the end of this run, we got another, what do you think, Zach? Like 20, 30 minutes-ish? 30 minutes at most. Yeah, we got to hit that incentive, okay. guys, okay? Right. We got to show that uh, Spike is using Peter Pan on turn. <laughs> oh my god, look at him go. So, Would you like to describe how difficult this is? Uh, it is so difficult that it is RNG whether he's going to break out, and Spike is pushing Terra toward a wall. And it is very scary. <laughs> mm -hmm. The what essentially what's happening is that when you do aerial attacks, like basic aerial attacks, oh, they got out too. But when you do basic aerial attacks with Peter Pan, he does this like triple stab move that keeps the enemy locked down. And if you just keep doing it over and over again, it's essentially not giving them a chance to get out of that like hit stun. Now, you have to jump within like a frame or two from landing to keep Peter Pan attacking fast enough for Lingering Will to stay in that. And once you get over a certain number of hits, Lingering Will's revenge value has been going up the entire time. So he might have a couple of revenge attacks like saved up. Spike was able to get back in on this. He was able to get control of the fight again, but now he's out of drive gauge, his health is low, uh, his friends are gone, so now he's gonna have to do this, like, just raw skill. He doesn't get a chance to uh, cheese it anymore at this point. Right, so yeah, if he's gonna continue this attempt, he's gotta actually fight through all the phases of this boss fight. Yeah. And Spike is the kind of person who says, you know what, I, a double netted combo is available, but I'm going to do it without it. Yeah, he's going to give it a shot. He's going to give it the old college try. Mm -hmm. Still, you know, no matter how many times you play this game, no matter how many times you fight Lingering Will, it feels like it never gets any easier. It's always scary. It's always going to be like, this is something that could go wrong at any moment. And it really requires a ton of, of practice 
and preparation to get it to a point where you could approach it like like Spike does right now. Exactly. So he built up enough drive and he's trying Peter Pan again. I guess we could do go through some more donations as well. Yeah, There's really not much it. else to say about it. Perfect. Um, I've got another song. I think I think I we've been enjoying these a lot. Um, I've got a fifty dollar donations from Super Spicy Turry. What's this? What's this? There's zombies everywhere. What's this? There's white things in the air. What's this? I can't believe my eyes. I must be dreaming. Come on, chat. This isn't fair. What's this? What's this? What's this? More GDQ to get. What's this? Incentives being met. What's this? Chet needs to start a train to get the funds to gain. Come on, donate everyone so we can see the village run. $5 funds, $5 funds so we can get our wish. What's this? That's a great reminder. Great, great song for the Resident Evil Village. Uh, we have less than $20,000 left to get that incentive met. We are, we are gaining ground chat. We don't have much longer to beat the runners, so we gotta keep it going, gotta keep the hype up. Y'all are doing great though. I believe that we can win this race together. Yeah, it's really making me want a Resident Evil crossover in Kingdom Hearts now. I don't know, now it's just <laughs> I, like it's right there. <laughs> I, I want it too, and the more I think about it, I'd be, imagine Sora creeping through Lady Demetrix's place. <laughs> Sora fighting zombies. He's, he's, he's fighting Zora, skeleton yeah. pirates. He's got, it's close enough. Yeah. He can do it. Yeah. Hmm. They've got pirates, the Caribbean. Same vibe. Yeah, the power of light and friendship it defeats zombies all the time. I've seen that happen before. It looks like Spike is actually going to get this lingering will as well. That was an amazing fight. Yeah, he, he did very well to get through that fight. Oh my God. That just goes to show how much he was practicing that fight in preparation for GDQ. Just for that alone, I would double the, by my uh, super boss donation incentive just for that one specifically. Just double up on that donation because that was, that was a great uh, attempt at Terra. Oh yeah, definitely. If you're going to donate for anything, donate for that performance for mm. beating Terra that way. Yeah, shout outs. Our runners have been absolutely destroying the sea with with all the super bosses and everything that it's thrown at them. Yeah, I mean they're really passionate about about Kingdom Hearts, Kingdom Hearts 2, the randomizer especially. All four of these runners have been um, just the last month and a half I've I've seen them take everything they can at this game and it's really showing out off here. Right, so let, let's give a summary of what's left for everybody to do. So, mm -hmm. uh, Violin needs to beat Zexion and Hades, I believe, in Olympus Coliseum. He's doing Agrabah right now. He's going to be done very shortly. Mm -hmm. He needs to do Terra and Ground Shaker. Or, so Terra and Disney Castle, Ground Shaker and Pride Lands, and then Starry Hill and Hunter in the Wood. And, that, and then he can just do the final fights. Rose yeah, needs to... Left. Rose needs to do Olympus Coliseum, which she's in right now. She needs to get the Mushroom 13 check, which she will, will take like a minute. Mm -hmm. And then she needs to do all of Port Royal. She has not stepped into Port Royal yet. She hasn't. Oh my god. So she has to do the entire set of Port Royal all the way up until Data Luxor. Mm -hmm. So Spike needs to do Data Roxas, get the Mushroom check, which he's doing right now, and then go to Starry and then Hobbs needs to do Data Roxas, Data Axel, and Starry. And he's about to finish off Roxas. Exactly, yeah. Oh, wow. So uh, at this point, I think I would say that Spike and Hobbs are ahead, but it's still anybody's race because there is a data fight in the way. And remember, both racers on a team need to finish in order to, for the team to finish. Mm -hmm. So yeah, both. It's only the second runner in that team whose time is what matters. Right. Exactly. That was a very clean uh, Hades with the Berserk Charge final form. There, you just fly into the air and you're gone. Yep. Good job by Rose. 
All right, Star Hill thing. Chat, Spike. Oh, it's Thunder. Don't, Spike, don't no. lose Spike. Don't do it. No! Spike, okay. no! You know what? It's fair. He's got to go fast. Uh, I, Maybe he'll like do it. Spike is going to have to write an apology. We had the Bulbasaur apology. We're going to have to have the Yeet the Bear apology. The Yeet the Bear yeah. apology. Oh, no. He, he's very focused in. He's been doing these bosses with, like, the actual strats the entire time. I'll give him a little bit of space here. He was right there, though. <laughs> he he was could right have there. done it. We got to make sure that the Resident Evil incentive is met. And then we got to also meet an incentive for Spike to actually apologize for not saving Winnie the Pooh. For eating the bear. Oh, no. <laughs> have to have a stern talk with him later. I, mm -hmm. My heart is broken. <laughs> How could he do we, this to We us? are a Winnie the Pooh household. We mm -hmm. love Winnie the Pooh. And for him to not save, oof, oof. Hobbs won't forget. He would never forget. We, we need to see some bear eating this scene by somebody. Mm -hmm. If you guys donate enough and, 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 you, and you mention that they need to eat, Maybe they'll maybe they'll feel it. Maybe it'll go through like the the aether. You know, they'll they'll feel the people's will. I also want to say we have less than ten thousand dollars left to get Resident Evil Village unlocked. Oh, we are so, so close. We are getting so close. We are closing that gap. Chat, you make are it. doing awesome. Keep those donations coming in. Yeah, make it happen, chat. I love the knock smash on, on, on Terra here from Violin. Mm -hmm. Goofy flying around <laughs> like a rocket is so funny to me. You never get to see knock smash. It's not as good in FM as it was in like the English version. Goofy was broken in, in like the base okay. English version. Sorry, I need to interrupt. We have some bear eating happening on Rosa's stream. She's looking at camera. She knows. She knows. She knows what she's doing. Go Look at that yay. yeet. That is a almost perfect yeet. That was a full power home run kind of a yeet. That's what we like to see. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Rose Rose is Rose is good. Now she's going to do all for Royal. <laughs> yeah, Rose does not need to apologize for anything. No, no. She's been All these runners have been doing amazing today. You, you forget one bear and that's all they ever talk about, you know? Like <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Spike is going to do double negative combo on Data Roxas. Mm -hmm. uh, Hobbs is trying to get through Data Axel here. And Violin is trying to get through Terra, trying to get through that first initial attack to start doing some damage. He's so getting long. really unlucky with the opening plays from the Terra. I mean, the, the bike phase is so mean. And after bike phase, he ends up doing like the lasers and more difficult mm -hmm. um, openers here. That's really just not in favor of the owner. Right. Looks like he got it though. He maybe don't. I don't know if we want to focus it too much on it. I'm kind of scared for. Yeah. Let, let, let's, uh, let's avoid commentator's curse and read some donations. Yeah, yeah. We've seen this. Yeah. Um, I've got fifty dollars from Level Up Carl saying, "One does not simply talk about best Disney movies without a shout out to a goofy movie." After today, I think we can see eye to eye and agree that it stands out. Nobody else but you, Lady Demetrix, can complete this year's GDQ. So let's open that incentive. Let's meet that incentive before we hit the open road. Love from Norway. Thank you, Carl. Appreciate that donation. We also have $50 from Dopey Pokemon saying, love KH2, love GDQ, and the amazing work you do. And Treasure Planet is the best, if oft overlooked, Disney movie. Also, Slowpoke is the best evolution, donating towards that Resident Evil bonus game. And just a quick update, we have a little over $164,000 out of that one $70,000 for cent of cent of everyone. We have a little over $5,000 left. We are so, so close. I want to see it before any of these runners finish their run. So let's, let's right. keep up that momentum, chat. You're doing fantastic working together. Right. So chat, you have about four minutes. Spike is going to get through these final fights super fast. You got to go quick. 
Are you gonna let the man that didn't eat the bear beat you to the donation incentive? Yeah, you, you chat. he cannot win. You have to beat him. He he tried to he he skipped over eating the bear so he could try to gain t time on all of you. Unbelievable. Yep. It's like saving the animals or killing the animals. How you know what you have to do, Chad. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, oh my so Spike, God. Is, Spike is using Magnega to clear out these enemies. This is pretty much the same thing that uh, the any percent will do, because you do have Magnega when you do these final fights. Looks like he's going to use Master Form to get through the engine core portion of final fights here. I do like the Master Form decision here, I think, actually, since he can spam the magnets on the core. It'll cause, like... The, the the core room is kind of scary because the <laughs> dragon building wings essentially would come down to hit you and those are actually do a ton of damage on crit and they're really scary so if you just spam the magnets on the core it'll do enough hits to cause that phase to essentially just skip mm -hmm. and you can see right now with his stats and his abilities look at him just wrecking the enemies in this engine room he's absolutely just oh my god maybe he got stuck oh i shouldn't say anything yep <laughs> you said something i got yep. it. you know oh my god <laughs> okay spike said he's gotten through it though and it looks like j-hops is right behind him coming through did yep. he eat that bear did he do we see him eat that bear he i don't i don't think he yeeted i don't i didn't I don't see think he yeeted yeet either i didn't see a yeet I, i'm watching i'm watching the stream back no he did not yeet hobbs did not yeet Oh my god. Oh my goodness. This is a travesty. We will definitely be reminding them afterwards. Oh. So we're going to be like about $1,500. The, the tracker is going insane right now. I just I just want to point that out. We are, we are so close. I think we can beat them, chat. Oh my goodness. You can do it. They, uh, look, he's only... got it. This, this phase is timed. He has to do a lot of stuff here. You have enough time to make it happen before he can get to final Zenness. I know you can do it. Less than $1,000. Oh my goodness, it, it's going, it's going. Oh my God, how close. Oh wow. We did it! We did it! Hey, yeah, good job did guys, it. well done. Oh my goodness. All right. Okay, now we're gonna get that Kingdom Chat. Hearts Resident Evil crossover. This is great. <laughs> Chat is the true winners of the KH2 random race. That's <laughs> oh definitely, 100%. They've always been the true winners here, haven't they? <laughs> All right, so Rose is through Port Royal 1. Uh, Violin is getting through Olympus Coliseum 2. Neither Rose nor Violin have done Ground Shaker, so there's, they're just like a story fight or two behind. Mm -hmm. um, and they have, and that's all they have left is just story fights at this point. So uh, they'll be like probably 10 minutes behind if everything goes well on their end. But Hobbs and Spike did very well in terms of playing through the seed and getting through the fights. They didn't do so well at eating the bear, but... Mm-hmm. That's worth at least 10 minutes, maybe 12. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We might have to put a... <laughs> we'll add an extra time on there. It, 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 yeah. it's, it's fair. It's, 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 it's required. Right. <laughs> We're going to see this man melt, though, with the level... with his magic stat and his level 3 reflect. He's not oh. making it into a second phase, I don't think. Right, so something else that the randomizer does is it allows you to skip the minute and a half dome animation cutscene at the end of Final Xemnas. And mm -hmm. given all the practice that uh, everybody has done for this, he should be able to skip that as long as he doesn't do too much damage. Yeah, if, once he's below that, first, that last health bar, more or less, if he allows Xemnas to do anything during that time, Xemnas will put him in the laser dome. And technically, it's faster to just die and start again, because a minute and a half is a long time. So, like he's using Session to continue to deal damage to Xemnas here. Looks nice. like he's going to make it through. All right, and he is. Spike is the first to finish, but he did not beat you, chat. You beat Spike. Yeah, so that would be time for Spike, technically. Yes, that is his time. And we still have their team. J-Hobbs has to finish once he gets through this final armor Xemnas 
phase we'll be getting right into final Xemnas and I would assume it'll look pretty similar to the way that Spike did it. That reflect is so powerful against those lasers, especially during the opener. Right, exactly. We're giving Spike a time penalty, though, for not eating the Oh, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. 100%. Definitely. Mm -hmm. I think Chad can yeah. agree as well. Send in more donations and tell us what the what the time <laughs> delay should be for Spike. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do donate and tell us what his penalty should be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Again, if the chat was the winner, so they get to decide. Exactly. It's Anger only fair. And hate mm -hmm. and I loved the uh, Peter Pan usage for that Hades fight, actually, on the violin side. That was really um, smart. Yes. He got some healing back as well with that fire. Yep, that oh is. Oh my god, is Jabs using the ground combo instead? It was working, but it didn't seem to finish off there. I shouldn't have said anything. I should have let him do his thing. Anger right, yeah. And hate that's fine. He also supreme. didn't eat the bear. Yeah, that's fair. It's, 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 it's the pain. <laughs> Yeah, there's a very cool strat where you stay on the ground by using Blizzard and Reflect and then uh, an explosion. And if you stay on the ground, it actually is faster because you don't have to fall to the ground after this phase here. Mm -hmm. And then he's immediately ready to just fight Zemnis again. It's a really cool strat. You don't see it very often. That's exciting to see that here. Yeah. Immediately into laser phase. If you just reflect the lasers as he comes out, you'll hit him as he flies past and that'll get his health just low enough to get into a session and give yourself that, that dome skin. There it is. He caught it. Beautiful yeah, beautiful love. second attempt from Hobbs. Yep. There it is. And that's time for them. They, now they it's have done officially it. Spike and Hobbs winning the 2v2 co-op race. Yeah, GG's to all of the runners here. Uh, wonderful run for everyone. It's still a sub three hour six Super boss run? That is amazing. We did it. Oh, yeah. I mean, he didn't eat the bear, so. Didn't eat the bear, but still, we'll give him that. That is a wonderful race. Now, okay. I think no, we violin. don't have much left on their end. Violin, are you going to eat the bear? He must. If Rose will eats, remind him. If he eats the bear, then Rose and Violin win the race. Do he Ro he baited us? No, go violin, violin. Don't do it! Oh no, he was gonna. Why? <sighs> well, it's like we he knew. We can't give Rose and Violin the win now because only Rose eated the bear. This is Rose, the true winner here. I think Rose is Chat's the true winner, but Rose is our second place for sure. Yeah, yep. I see them going back to eat that bear. Did someone mentioned. Oh, uh, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. They're, 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 they're can't do it afterwards. I, it, I'll mm -hmm. give it, but it doesn't fully count. I also want to take a moment and point out how, for anyone who hasn't noticed, the transitions on the screen is uh, GDQ. Which oh yeah, that's been happening the entire scene. Phenomenal. <laughs> yeah, those were that were that, those were fun to put in. All right, I, they're not forgiven, chat. They are, only after they are, it was pointed out. <laughs> to them <laughs> what their wrong was. <laughs> we still, they still played incredibly well, but the bear oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. shall always but, be remembered. Yeah. Seriously though, like we're joking that like they didn't eat the bear, but they played incredibly well and they deserved to win that race based on how well they played. Violin arose a very close second. It, it looks like there's a lot of time here, but there was not a lot of content between the two uh, teams. So it is definitely, like, everybody played well. Yeah, really. We got to see a ton of different, um, like, styles as well in terms of how they were approaching the game. Spike wasn't really using those uh, more straightforward strats for the bosses, and J-Hobs end up using them for a couple at the end, but we still saw them finishing at a very similar pace. Rose was uh, fighting through with negative combo for a few of those super bosses as well. We got to see a lot of final form strats from her since she got it so early. That's exciting. Yeah, exactly. She did get turned into a dice here, but that's okay. Oh, it didn't. Why didn't it? Is she invincible? What's happening? I think she's trying to reset it, but it won't let her. Okay, there it is. 
I think, what is it, once Violin finishes Ground Shaker, he'll be going to Final Fights. And then... Yeah, once Rose yeah. does Data Luxor, she goes to do uh, Mushrooms and then Ground Shaker and she'll be doing Final Fights. Like, yeah, so there's about a minute difference. Yeah. All right. Uh, while that's happening, Nukes, can you read some donations off? Yes, yeah, a lot, a lot of love for all these runners here. Um, I have $5 from Tech saying, I've watched Spike practice and seen firsthand the amazing amount of work these runners have put in. And don't forget, yeet the bear, <coughs> Spike. <laughs> uh, I also have $50 from Rap Hack saying, this has been a great KH Rando race. All of their practice runs have definitely paid off for such an entertaining run. All of AGDQ has been fantastic, and I don't want it to end. As per Hobbs' suggestion, yeet the bear. Great luck to all the runners coming up. I also have $100 from Doomsock saying, good luck to all the runners, especially Rose, who has built such a vibrant and accepting community. I am so proud to see my friend run her first and ho of hopefully many GDQ events. You've got this, lady. A challenge, is it? Do you know the rules? Yeah, these are some of the top runners within the Rando community. There's a large Kingdom Hearts 2 Rando community that does races every week and um, a lot of support there in terms of helping people learn and, and, and figuring out like how to do all these different types of strats. And these the, the, these four people are, are some of the best. And so it's definitely not like this time difference is, is really that big given the content that they were doing. Yeah, it, like, it, it might look like a lot just because of like the, the amount of time that Spike and Hobbs have been sitting on, on their screens, but like... In terms of the amount of like actual like combat and hard difficult stuff to do, there wasn't a lot of difference between the, the runners. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know if uh, Violin and Rose like actually know that Spike and Hop are finished. Like they typed in the, the shared chat, so it's possible that they know, um, but it's possible they're just focused in. Um, but like Violin is doing final fights now, and then. Uh, Rose will be able to get through the rest of the content once Data Lux is dead here. Um, mm -hmm. So, everybody in chat, you, like, we we were joking, but, like, give a lot of love to these four runners for, like, doing a lot of very difficult things that, like, it's a randomized receipt. You don't know what you're going to fight when you start. <laughs> so, you have yeah, to be none of these for four runners literally did, everything. Neither did we. Right, exactly. Like, they had to prep for every possible scenario, so there is a lot more work than just what you're seeing here as well. Exactly. Like, there are bosses that didn't have to be fought for this seed that they all these runners were practicing. Mm -hmm. um, so Rose is getting through some damage on Data Luxor here. Doing very well. Trying to get that time gauge down to get to that yeah, final attack. Barely above the DM phase. Now it's red. If she stops, she should go into it. Yep. Okay. She just has to play that mini game. She knows the rules. Ooh, those cards almost hit her. Almost there. Mm -hmm. The pause buffers make it a little bit easier to hit the, the circle as it comes up. It's definitely not easy to do without them. Right? There it is. Uh, All right. The last, like, difficult boss of the seed is done for Rose. So now it's just ground shaker and finishing up the game. So how much... Um, is it in total with the six super bosses, Zach? What was Four. the incentive? Right, so I said I was spending $25 per super boss. Mm -hmm. um, I saw each of the runners do each of those super bosses. So that is 25 times 24, $600. Oh my God. We didn't even have to apply that towards the Resident Evil incentive chat oh, I, on top of it. Oh, I did that earlier. I already did it. 
Oh, you've already thrown that in. That's how we got part of the reason we got there. Well, good, well done. Mm -hmm. Part right. of the um, Oh yeah, uh, I was I was on chat side. Um, we all believed in chat. We knew chat could do it. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, yeah. Nukes, are there any more donations you want to give while uh, Rose is cleaning up the rest of this here? Yeah, I have. Uh, where did that one go? I have. Uh, I had one about eating the bear here. Oh, twenty-five dollars from Bear Eaters Incorporated. <laughs> saying, "Eat that bear." I also have a hundred dollars from Trev HD saying, "As promised, fifty dollars per bear heated." I also have $600 from Sam saying these runners are simply incredible. Here's $100 for each required super boss. I have okay. $250 from Michael G saying, eat those bears, fight those zombies. Let's go! Uh, I, I need to point out that Violin has put his shades on, his signature shades for Final Xemnas. Um, is, is he is he playing? Um, <laughs> I'm sure in his heart he's playing brain power. <laughs> when he he plays brain power in his streams when he puts those shades on. So I'm sure he's he's got that all set up. I, I feel like I can I can I can feel it from him. He's exuding that energy, you know. Oh yeah, 100. <laughs> percent He's hoping to get. The dome skip here as well. He's gonna be really careful how close this is. Okay, well done. There we go. Okay, violin is finished. Very Rose well done. Rose is not too far behind. Yeah, yeah Rose has to see... do Scar and Ground Shaker and then Falcon. Yeah. Thankfully, she has um, those same tools the others had had in terms of the Berserk Charge, the high stats. She's mm -hmm. gonna get this. I don't even think he'd be on there. That was wonderful. Nope. I think that was a, a very clean scar fight. Very clean scar fights all day today. Honestly, I this, that's one of those fights that scares me the most, man. I mean, I've said it before, but Scar sometimes just decides not today. He's doing his own thing, you know. Oh yeah. So, I think every runner had a very clean scar. This. Mm -hmm. this They've had, they've had really clean runs all day. Everything has been, been honestly, uh, couldn't have asked for, for a better, uh, like, showing. Oh, yeah. I, I'm very happy with, like, the amount of bosses we had to see, the play from all the runners. Like, mm -hmm. I'm so glad that this is the seed that was shown for, for this race at GDQ. Yeah, it's been wonderful being able to have... Uh, the randomizer at AGDQ uh, at all, and seeing it as a 2v2 co-op race, you get four people at once, I mean, we can, there's no better way to show it off. I feel like it'd yeah. be great to take a moment here and just let chat know uh, they should all follow these runners. They all do fantastic, oh, yeah. fantastic jobs with Kingdom Hearts. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely go give them a follow on Twitch if you want to see more. Like... They did an incredible job today. Yeah, so uh, Violin plays Kingdom Hearts 2 Randomizer. He plays, he does KH1 speedruns. He holds the world record in PC for beginner and standard right now, I believe, in KH1. Mm -hmm. um, Spike and Hobbs, you guys know Spike and Hobbs, but they play KH2 like forever. And Rose has been playing KH2 for quite a while, and she's doing another marathon run for Frame Fatales next month. So like, she's gonna be playing KH2 Rando there too. So definitely follow every single one of the runners. Yeah, wonderful runners, wonderful people, wonderful channels. Definitely give these people a follow afterwards. They are the top of the Rando community. While, uh, while Rose is getting to Ground Shaker, I guess we could probably do some quick shout outs to some people who help make the random possible. Mm -hmm. um, the big shout out I want to give right off the bat is to Sonic Shadow Silver 2. Uh, he made the Garden of Assemblage mod, which is the World Hub mod here. And he did a lot of early work in the rando and is continuing to work on the rando as like all the time. So definitely huge shout outs to him. Um, the tracker that is being used for this co-op right now was 
heavily developed by Red Buddha and Madness. They did a lot of work on that to make that work. Even with the small hiccups, like it was not possible to do that without them. Mm -hmm. um, and then there was some very early work on the randomizer to make it even possible to like randomize items in any way. So what, big shout outs to Dessa, 35, Biscuit 047, the Laxer for like seed generation. Like there's just so many people that we want to thank that like we kind of had to leave the list to this like small set, but really it's a thank you to everyone in the Rando community. Like it is such a great place to be, such a fun game to play. Um, and I definitely invite everybody to uh, try out KHT Rando. And how can they do that, Alios? Uh, I do believe uh, if you go to uh, discord.gg forward slash KH2FM Rando, yep. then you'll be able to find our Discord where we post all of the guides on how to set it up. It's where everyone um, is mainly located for uh, finding races and just being able to meet people in the community and, and learn and play. Um, it's, we're about, how, how long has it been? Are we about a little over a year and a half of, of the rando community like starting, right? Maybe almost two years now? Uh, it's, I don't know how long it was before I joined, but it's been almost a year and a half for me. Yeah, it's been it's been a wonderful community. Uh, there's been so many people who've been able to to participate and and play Rando in the last year. And the only way that Rando has even gotten to the point it is now for you to see it here at AGDQ has been the work of just everyone putting in their all to make this happen. So thank you guys. Yeah. All right. So Rose just beat Ground Shaker. She just needs some mm -hmm. all fights now. Nukes, are there any last minute donations you want to throw in while Rose is getting two final points? Yeah, I have $50 from Young Wizard saying, what's poppin' via Rose chat and GDQ? Here's to great RNG and just the right amount of datas. Both the Shade Brigade and Rose Grove are watching and rooting for you on the sidelines. Violin salute. I also have $25 from Zimata saying, this has been my first GDQ event I've been able to catch live after having old videos recommended to me over the last year. And it's been a blast. Thanks to all the organizers, crew, volunteers, and runners for putting on a great event for a great cause. Can't wait to see Resident Evil 8 run and everything else coming up this week. Um, so, Violin has now yeeted the bear. Post-mortem. Yep. Mm -hmm. it, I will say it was not a very impressive yeet. It was one of the weaker yeets I've seen. Yeah, I, I think he's trying again. Side. He's trying again. He's going to make it a better one. Okay. Can you do it again? We can. Yeah, yeah you can repeat this. Oh. I'm learning something new every day. It's been a year, and I still find new things in this game. <laughs> <laughs> There okay, it that, is. that was better. That was better. All right. Full right. power. Everyone has now yeeted the bear. We are all good. It is a true. It's, it's a true two v two co op. Cage two randomizer race now. It's, it's, it's been completed. <laughs> all right. So yeah, Rose just needs to get through these fights. She'll blast through them all. She'll be done in like four minutes. Yeah, shouldn't be too bad. Uh, I imagine we're going to see some more final form stats from her. I know she's more comfortable with final form here, and it's really, really good if you can use it correctly. Yeah, well, she has Stitch out right now. She's, she's probably going to use Stitch on this engine core fight at the beginning here. Mm -hmm. Because you can refill your MP over and over. Um, Stitch makes it kind of safe, too. He'll block stuff for you. It's pretty, he's, he's pretty wonderful. Oh, yeah, 100%. Except for giving your mana, he never recovers your mana, because that wouldn't be... <laughs> oh, yeah, so it is a little bit RNG dependent if he's going to heal your MP or not, and he can be a little trolly sometimes. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Rose is getting through these uh, nobodies very quickly. Gonna switch over to Final Form. Final Form. Use the Keyblades on the engine. Quick mm -hmm. kill there. Destroy it. Okay, you need to watch what Rose is going to do here. She's been practicing this. It's very swag. She's just gonna. Oh, is she go not doing it? Next, just fire. Just oh wow! Burning him to death. He's. Oh know. my god. Yeah, that was insane. I didn't even see his health bar go down. It's just gone. 
That's what happens when your stats are that high. Oh my god. All right, Rose. All right, chat. Xemnas here will say a line that is something like, nothingness is eternal, but it really is, nothingness is eternal. Yeah, turtles. So, I want to see some turtles in chat. Eternal. It's truly menacing. <laughs> Um, did, did Rose just take her glasses off? Maybe, maybe it's just been a long run. Her, like, nose is sweaty or something. Yeah, something, something's different. I don't know. It's toward the end I of the run. I mean, honestly. It's been, it's, it's been three hours. Yeah, it, it makes sense. Yeah, I mean, yeah, this is one of the longer, like, speed runs in general. Like, this game is not a, a quick... Any percent run, and then with the randomizer, you're doing more than just the any percent run. These runs will average two and a half to three hours, easy. That's a lot of. It's a lot of work. Okay. All right, final Xenos, uh Done. Okay. Oh, okay. Rose? Rose. Rose. Why? <laughs> Rose is gonna do the final boss blindfolded, chat. Is. Anger and hate There's no way. Are supreme. Chad? I don't think I've ever seen this fight done unfolded before. <laughs> okay, she's asked to reflect. Okay. She's doing this all by audio, audio chat. Oh my goodness. She has the stats. She got hit by an orb there. That's it. Okay. Reflect there. Oh my god. Thankfully, Riku can't heal you a bit here. If he's nice, it's kind of orange you Okay, she's in laser phase. Okay, she's in the session. session. She, she menus down to the item without being able to see it? Okay. Okay, another one. Doing some more session. Trying to hit Xemnas. Can she fine tune though now? She's gonna do the finisher. Yeah, that's this gonna hit everything. This is gonna do damage, okay. Okay, if she gets another session off, she has it. Session? There it is. Oh my god, is she gonna get it? As long as, she, as long as she continues this, she has it. He's, he's stuck there. She did it. Oh my god. He did it. That was so cool. <laughs> she did it blindfolded. Holy and that is a GG. Yeah. GG. Oh Absolutely GG. Okay. What a way to end it wow. in. Wow. <laughs> Rose yeeted the bear and beat the we final boss it. blindfolded. I almost felt like we had to give her silence. She can't even hear us, and I'm like, <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> all right, all right. So that is time for all the runners. I greatly appreciate oh everybody who watched this run. It's been super fun to commentate. Alios, Sora. This was super fun to do with you, man. I can't. Yeah, Don't thank you, Zach. I, this was so it's exciting to even be able to participate in AGDQ, let alone commentate for what is my favorite game of all time. This has been absolutely wonderful. All right, yeah. So do you have any other thank yous you want to give, Alios? Uh, gosh. Uh, thank my parents. They did great. You know, I've been, <laughs> I'm having a good time. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, I, I definitely think we're done there. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you to all the runners, Violin, Rose, Spike, and Hobbs. It's been super fun. Mm -hmm. I, I am absolutely speechless after that, that, oh. The, bl the the unexpected blindfolded fight after that just already impressive race. I shout outs again to all of our runners for that race and the commentators for doing a great job. That was incredible. But also you chat for being our true winners of that race, getting that Resident Evil Village incentive met. I y'all did a fantastic job. Uh, speaking of donations, I just want to read a few that we didn't get to hit during that run. 
uh, $600 from Zach the Robot saying, I saw 24 super bosses on screen. So here's $25 per super boss. I also have $10,000 from Fangamer saying, hey, everybody, Fangamer here. That Kingdom Hearts 2 race had us on the edge of our seats. And so did the bonus game donation challenge. We are thrilled to see the in incentive has been met and Resident Evil Village is up next. Thanks to everyone that chipped in to make it happen. Keep those donations coming in. One way to help raise the total is to shop at Fangamer AGDQ 2022 collection. 100% of the profit from sales of GDQ merch through the end of the event will support the Prevent Cancer Foundation. Check out the full lineup at fangamer.com slash GDQ. I know I already went to the site myself chat and they have some amazing products. Uh, they have this, this clear glass mug with uh, games done quick on it. it. It definitely recommend checking it out. Beautiful, beautiful merchandise. And it all goes to help prevent Cancer Foundation, all the, the profit. I also have $1,000 from Ryan saying, Kingdom Hearts is one of my favorite series. Been hooked on these rando runs recently. Super happy to donate to a great cause during this run. All right, everyone, we'll be right back after a word from our sponsors. Look forward to exciting releases from NIS America, featuring, including Fury U's Monarch, that's M-O-N-A-R-K, available February 22nd on PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, and Nintendo Switch. Go to nisamerica.com slash monarch for more information. All right, everyone, we're going to pass it over to an interview with Kizaran and Dr. Peter Kingham from PCF. Hello, AGDQ 2022 Online. It's Kizaran here, also known as Steven, and I'm here with Dr. Peter Kingham. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, thanks. Sitting in snowy New York. Yeah, it's definitely been snowing like everywhere. We just went through a snowstorm here in Spokane, and I, I've heard that like the East Coast has been hit pretty hard too. But uh, yeah. I understand that you work outside of the Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center, correct? Yep, that's in uh, New York City. It's it's one of the uh, few uh, hospitals in the U.S. that is focused only on cancer care. Now, on the topic of cancer care, obviously, all of you at home know that we are doing this for the Prevent Cancer Foundation, and Dr. Peter Kingham is very involved with cancer research and prevention. Would you like to tell the audience at home kind of what you do and what the nuts and bolts of it are? Yeah, so I'm a, I have a job that is split in two different ways. So I'm a, I'm a surgeon. I'm a liver and pancreas cancer surgeon. So I have a practice in New York City and patients there, and that's where I do surgeries. Um, actually I do a lot of robotic, minimally invasive surgery. It's a lot of technology mixed in with it. The other half of my job is I lead our global cancer disparity initiative. And what that is, is collaborations in uh, a few different centers uh, and countries in sub-Saharan Africa, trying to figure out how with collaborative research and training, can we improve outcomes for cancer patients in those lower resource environments? Now, if I understand correctly, uh, PCF is actually involved in two grants of yours. Like you are actually a really, really busy person. Uh, one of them is the, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, the colorectal cancer screening uh, for Nigeria. And the other is for breast cancer screening in high-risk Nigerian women, obviously also in Nigeria. Uh, would you like to go into detail on how that kind of symbiosis between you and PCF works for those two grants and then just, you know, more details about both grants in general? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Prevent Cancer Foundation has been a really important supporter of ours um, going back a number of years now. And uh, the first study that was funded was uh, the study using a uh, relatively new device. It's a handheld device called the iBreast device that has 16 
um, little, there's a square at the tip of at the tip of the device, and within that square is 16 piezoelectric squares. And there, you put them on the breast, and they tell you, is there something more stiff underneath that than the normal breast? Um, and so this is the idea: is can we diagnose breast cancer at a smaller size? than currently happens in a place like Nigeria. The average breast uh, tumor size in Nigeria is the size of like an orange. Uh, it's about 10 centimeters, which is huge. In the US, it's less than a centimeter. Most women have their cancers picked up just on mammogram where it's just a tiny little speck. So this is uh, a study that we really wanted to rigorously look at this technology and uh, compare it to just a clinical breast examination. And we went to three different cities in Nigeria, led by our collaborating Nigerian surgeons. And um, they basically took some brand new nurses straight out of nursing school who had never done uh, clinical breast exams, never used a device like this. And in the end, we were able to show that the results of this handheld device in the hands of a brand new nurse was the same as the hand evaluation, the physical examination by a very experienced surgeon. So at first we saw the results and we thought, oh, okay, is this positive or negative? Um, it actually could be very meaningful because it may mean that there's a way at much more rural areas like community health centers to have a nurse who is uh, you know, the healthcare provider for the whole village uh, who is responsible for everything, not just cancer care, and give something to her that would allow her to bring the expertise of say a surgeon's physical examination uh, to more remote areas outside of the major medical centers. Um, we've now, um, uh, we're working to, to finalize the analysis of that study, and we've now created the next step, which is a much larger study, uh, doing some randomization, trying to really prove uh, how useful this device is. So that was, that was the first study. Um, we've also been very interested in colon cancer. And uh, it's a bit of a similar story. Most patients in a place like Nigeria walk in the hospital with very advanced tumors. Sometimes you can visibly see the tumors coming through the abdominal wall or out of the rectum. Um, and so most patients can't be cured because the cancer is identified at a, at a late stage. So we've spent a lot of time trying to figure out, especially in a low resource environment, how can you find uh, earlier stage colorectal cancer? And we've uh, we were criticized as we were doing all these studies because we never used the most common and cheapest way of identifying colon tumors uh, in high-income countries, which is looking for microscopic blood in the stool. And uh, it's what's advocated for by a lot of groups. And, and, and many people look at our high-income countries uh, data and say, well, this probably would work the same in a lower resource environment. So this is what you should use. So we did a study and um, kudos to my colleagues in Nigeria. This is during COVID. They were able to accrue about 2,500 patients at three different cities in Nigeria. And they tested all of them for microscopic blood in the stool. And anyone who had a positive got a colonoscopy. And the results were really striking. 20% of this general population had a positive test. And that's very, very high. In the US, that number is like 5%. And the problem was when we did colonoscopies on these patients, they actually, the large majority of them didn't have tumors. It's all false positives. And there's dietary differences, lifestyle differences that can lead to this microscopic blood. Um, so our conclusion is that it's actually very unlikely that this method that we think works so well in high income countries, it may actually not be relevant. Um, it may not be accurate enough in countries like Nigeria. and that's a really important message because in Nigeria and many other low resource environments, there, there is no health insurance for the majority of patients. 95% of patients, it's self-pay. So if you do a test that is a false positive that leads to someone having to pay for a colonoscopy, which could be five months salary, that's a massive issue. The amount of financial toxicity that goes uh, along with that is really huge. So these findings have really big ramifications. There's a lot of people in the world who have been interested uh, in these results. And we think that this is the, the first large study in Sub-Saharan Africa that's going to sort of show that the common message that what works in the US and Western Europe, uh, it doesn't work in, in Nigeria. Um, and another good example that 
we really need to be studying cancer prevention, cancer uh, treatment in the places where the patients are. You can't extrapolate from a high income country to a low resource environment. And that kind of really emphasizes to everyone watching at home just how important it is to help uh, donate and raise funds for such projects like this. Uh, I, I can't imagine the, the overhead or the cost of taking care of an entire research platoon like that. But to end on a little more of a lighter note, I know you mentioned before we started this interview that you've actually been to a GDQ before. You, uh, you were at our Orlando showing at uh, AGDQ 2020. Uh, you kind of want to tell everyone at home like what, what that experience was like actually seeing the event in person? I totally blew my mind away. I, I had no idea the extent of what this conference was going to be like. Um, probably the best part for me was my nieces and nephews thought for a very small moment that I was actually kind of cool. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Dr. Kingham, for taking the time out of your day to uh, conduct this interview with me. Uh, just a reminder to everyone at home, don't forget AGDQ 2022 online is the entire week and all donations will be going towards such projects such as these and just the Prevent Cancer Foundation as a whole. Uh, I'm Kizaron again, and this was Dr. Peter Kingham. Thanks again, and I hope everyone has a good week. Thank you, Stephen. Great, great to be a part of this. Thank you, Kizaran and Dr. Peter Kingham for that amazing interview. Thank you, thank you so much for just, just reminding us what all of this go towards. Uh, real quick chat, we are going to take a quick little break here. Uh, so make sure to take a chance to get up, maybe get some more snacks, get a nice cozy blanket. We go on to Resident Evil Village. I just want to say real quick, thank you, chat, for an absolutely incredible first hosting shift. I'm so grateful for all of your support for the Prevent Cancer Foundation and for all your help unlocking the incentive tonight via song and puns. I'm nuclear underscore reaction, and I'm looking forward to my next hosting shift tomorrow morning. For now, 
I will put you in the hands of Scent, an eternal enigma, and Lady Demetrix. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Awesome Games Done Quick Online 2022. My name is Scent, and you might notice I'm sitting in a little bit of a different spot than usual. Let me explain that for you. Spike doing Terra without both negative combos equipped put me so far on the edge of my seat that I actually underfloat. I'm on the back of the couch now. That's, that's just life. That's what it has to be. <laughs> Oh, welcome back, everyone. We have a ton of absolutely amazing prizes that I cannot wait to show you, but the important information is all of the prizes I'm about to show you end with the Cross Beats Showcase a little bit later tonight. So if you have not already gotten your donations in today, please, please do so. You definitely want to win some of these amazing prizes. First off, uh, from Wolf Shadow, we have a pair of lovely iron-on patches here. We've got the uh, heartless symbol and the nobody symbol as well. I promise I know what direction they go, Richard. He is he is yelling at me from behind the camera, and I appreciate that. Thank you, Richard. These are absolutely lovely. Only a five dollar minimum of donation. Thank you so much, Wolf Shadow, for sending them out to us. Now, from our friend C Average, who I call Severage because I can't read, we have a set of lovely perlers, and it's really convenient that we do because. Richard, before I went on this segment, challenged me to explain the entire storyline of Kingdom Hearts. And you know what? I can do that in like 30 seconds here. So, um, Darkness, Darkness, Keyblade, Darkness, Keyblade, Sora, Keyblade, Sea Salt Ice Cream, Sora, Keyblade, Kingdom Hearts is Light. That's that's pretty much the entirety of Kingdom Hearts story. That's all you need to know. But seriously, uh, a lovely set of perlers. Again, you can just see right through them, trying to hold them up to the light so you can see the backdrop through them. You can see me through them. Excellent meld on these. Thank you much to so much to C Average for sending these out to us. They are a ten dollar minimum donation, and you can win the entire set together as a singular prize. Absolutely incredible. There we go. Got the Heartless out of the way. Now, from Cute Monster Props, we have a couple of absolutely amazing prizes. But first off, we have this lovely uh, silicone Ditto uh, figure here. Um, it's, you know, it's a Ditto. It's squishy. It's kind of a little bit stretchy. You can pull on it. It retains its shape. It's got, like, the texture of almost, like, gum or something. And it's great because that's exactly what I feel like a Ditto would feel like in real life if you were able to poke one. Come on, it's super adorable. $15 minimum donation. You know you want a ditto. You could have one. Make sure to get those donations in before the end of Crossbeats. From Over Here Stranger, we have a set of three different Kingdom Hearts themed canvas prints here featuring different games from the series. Kingdom Hearts uh, art, always super cool. Uh, love seeing it. These prints are great. You know, you can just set them up wherever you'd like. They make, you know, great on your coffee table. They make great on your shelf. They do great next to this lovely PC behind me. Wherever you want to put them, they'll look beautiful. $20 minimum donation for the set of three. And thank you so much to Over Here Stranger for sending those out to us. For a $15 minimum donation, keep it on the Kingdom Hearts art theme from Splattered Pixels. We have this Kingdom Hearts logo splatter art. This is, you know, super cool. It's the uh, negative space of the Kingdom Hearts logo with, you know, just paint splattered on the canvas to kind of outline it. I, I, I love this. This is just such a unique concept. It's such a cool style and it works so, so well. Thank you so much, Splattered Pixels. Again, $15 minimum donation could be yours, one of a kind splattered art. Now, here on the table right in front of me, we can see a King Mickey plush. King Mickey, adorable. Now, I believe about like 80% or something of the story of Kingdom Hearts is just everyone looking for King Mickey. So, um, r right here, right here. Over here, strangers sent him to us. It's a $10 minimum donation. You, you can end Kingdom Hearts right now. $10 minimum donation. The ending is right there. It could be yours. Make sure to get those donations in, please. There are so many excellent prizes. I'm struggling to talk about all of them, but I've got to because you definitely want to see them for a $25 minimum donation from Meredith Frederick. We have this absolutely lovely one-of-a-kind uh, Kingdom Hearts pin. It's got the Heartless and Nobody logos on it, and it is a completely functioning, refillable ink pin. Could be yours. $25 minimum donation. Make sure to get them in. Now, this next prize I want to talk about comes from Cute Monster Props. And it's important to remember that, you know, sometimes things don't always go perfectly. Unfortunately, uh, part of it did break during shipping, and Cute Monster Props has said, hey, this is the first iteration of the prize. Um, you know, 
I'll take it back after the event, I'll fix it up, we'll reinforce it, we'll make it better, and we will send it out to a winner. But Scent, if you want to show it off, I think you really should. And I do too, because from Cute Monster Props, for a $50 minimum donation, we have this absolutely gorgeous statue of Lady Dimitrescu transforming into her draconic, monstrous form here. Uh, it is... It is just absolutely incredible. You can see the resin crash, ah, the resin cast crystal she's kind of rising out of, uh, consuming her face as well, uh, the gem in her chest cavity. It is absolutely beautiful. This is also signed by the voice actress, you can see it there on the thigh, of uh, Lady Dimitrescu as well. It is an incredible, incredible piece. You can see a picture of it when it was first finished over at gamesdonequick.com. And again, this will be fixed up by Cute Monster Props, uh, reinforced and sent out to a winner. But I just, I had to show it off in person because I don't know if the photos do it justice. It is beautiful. $50 donation from now until the end of Crossbeats. Please make sure to get those donations in. Speaking of a $50 minimum donation... From our friends over at SEGA, the SEGA Mega Prize Pack is still available until the end of the Crossbeats run as well. And just as a reminder, that's going to come with a collector's edition of Shin Megami Tensei 5, a copy of the SEGA Genesis uh, Classics Collection, as well as a copy of Sonic Mania. It's going to come with four different Monkey Ball-themed pins inside, little Monkey Ball-themed uh, gacha balls there. It's going to come with a Steelbook case for Lost Judgment as well as digital codes for not only Lost Judgment, but Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania, some pins for Lost Judgment, and the official unique Nahobino uh, plush from Sega. This is only available from Sega. Super cool. $50 minimum donation for that as well. Both of those prizes, you got to get your donations in before the end of Cross Code. So, uh, Cross Code, Cross Beats. So please make sure you do so. Now, before I talk about our grand prizes, and before I go, there is one more thing I want to mention. Throughout the month of January, Games Done Quick is going to be donating uh, all of the revenue we receive from subs and bits, uh, minus whatever we're required to take out to cover taxes, right back to Prevent Cancer Foundation. Um, you know, so hey, if you were thinking about, you know, dropping some subs, maybe giving some subs to some friends, maybe throwing some bits in, that revenue that we receive from that, minus taxes, will be donated to the charity from Games Done Quick. Here's where it gets better though, right? Because if you have Amazon Prime, you have Prime Gaming. If you have Prime Gaming, then every month you get a sub, and that sub still gives the streamer the full revenue of a sub. See where I'm going with that, right? Like, come on. If you have that, uh, you know, your friend might, uh, your parents might, you know someone who's got Amazon Prime, and I'm sure we all do, these past two years have uh, really made two-day shipping an important necessity in our lives sometimes, uh, make sure that that is being put to good use. And what better use could there be than an amazing organization like the Prevent, Chancer Found uh, Prevent Cancer Foundation? Um, we just saw an amazing interview with, with Kizaran and uh, one of their incredible doctors. It is seriously such an honor to be here. Uh, raising money for uh, a cause that is so true and dear to me. Um, I lost my father a few years ago to undiagnosed, uh, well, lung cancer that was diagnosed, but was not caught that it had spread to his brain. Um, and it's, you know, it's a thing. Cancer is something that has affected a lot of us, which is why we are here, which is why we are raising money, which is why we are speed running, and which is why we're doing so many amazing things. Now, real quick, before I go, gotta talk about the grand prizes because they're so cool. $250 minimum donation. Make sure to get in for both of them. It's cumulative, so hey, $50 minimum donation gets you into everything I just talked about, including that amazing statue, uh, the Sega prize pack, all of the other Kingdom Hearts stuff, and gets you one-fifth of the way towards winning a Zelda-themed Heroic Replicas prize pack, this lovely Hylian shield, an amazing Dark Link style Master Sword we've been showing off all week, as well as a new replica from Dave, a cool solid metal Megaton Hammer. Absolutely awesome. Head over to gamesdonequick.com, see a cool picture of that, and thank you so much to Dave at Heroic Replicas for putting it all together for us. And right here behind my head, I'll just lie down so you can get a shot of that, Richard. We have a lovely Skytech Gaming Mark 9 gaming PC absolute beast of a machine. Make sure to go over to gamesdonequick.com, check out the specs on it. And while you're there, check out all of the other amazing prizes that you can win by donating, all the amazing incentives you can put those donations towards, and of course, all of the amazing speedruns you can catch at GDQ. 
Speedrun's like Resident Evil Village. Don't go anywhere. You don't want to miss it.